on topics, whether conscious or cosmic. It's never nonsense. Mega levels are microscopic. It's a killer priest project. AD control the rocket. Before we land the plane, many things we engage and explain. The unexplained without mass. Welcome to the Killer Priest Podcast. shirt today yo welcome to our episode um of killer priest podcast i'm your host killer priest and running the rocket is none other than ad a dizzle what's going on welcome back it's gonna be a wild show you already know let's go yeah man retrograde man when you're in mercury retrograde things happen sometimes they can happen in the opposite direction you know just like how mercury is spinning so Certain things happen that's, oh, man, that don't, don't supposed to happen. Well, that's supposed to happen, and mm-hmm. it happened. You know what I'm saying? All the planets align, the stars align, perfect. Yeah. And so perfect, A.D., that we got somebody on the show today. This is a special Tuesday. Yes. I see uh, the chat room is already filling up for this one. This is going to be crazy. I mean, <clears throat> this right here is is like one of the top 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 speakers uh knowledgeable incredible thinkers on the planet mm-hmm. you know what i mean uh we just gonna get right into it man i gotta i can't even hold out on this <laughs> on this being right here who have uh, helped us through so many ages and so many times and um through the 90s through the 80s and he goes, he goes even further back than that but i know when it hit our you know our neighborhoods and uh, our population and everybody is it was during the 90s and the stuff. He was still going up. He had books that mm-hmm. would come out. I can't even hold on this because it's going to be crazy uh, for the Rocket Room. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Coach Kandaka, uh, the Oracle, and our, and also our architects, Voltage and Black uh, Vinny L- Black Lodge. they in the building. So we're about to get into it. Without further ado, I present to you on the Killer Priest podcast, none other than the great David Ike. There we hey. go. There we go. <laughs> A little bit of delay reaction. Hello, mate. Yes. Hello. Man, I just want to say, how are you doing, uh, David Ike? I'm doing great, mate. And uh, I love the pictures behind you. The, the pyramids and that's a that's a beautiful place as well oh yeah um behind you now yeah it's um it's great to be talking to you uh, especially at this time because you know we've got to start coming together we've got to put aside the manufactured fault lines and realize we've got a common enemy here and that enemy is trying to divide and rule us it's trying to play us off against each other so we're so busy fighting each other, we don't see the same hands holding the strings attached to all of us. Um, it's a, a great time of opportunity. It's a, a, a time of great danger because of where the world is being taken fast. But it's a, a great time of opportunity because the very fact that it's now becoming more and more blatant that um, the world's going down a very sinister road, more and more people are seeing it. and. You know, when I started out doing this 32 years ago, uh, I mean, I couldn't fill a phone booth with interest. And now it's overwhelming. So that just shows you, you know, the world is changing in a good way as well as a, a, an unpleasant way. That's right. Technology, information is now getting out. And, you know, your voice back then, you know, you help us to have a, um, a free thinking, you know what I mean? To think as, you know, Outside the box that, that they set up for us. Tell us a yeah. little bit. I mean, that's the point. Um, it's a box. It's a bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens is that the population becomes, and we see it more and more with what's called the woke mentality. Uh, the population is manipulated to police the box. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, said, wow. I said a long time ago, you know, People laugh at sheep because they just follow the one in front and they follow the shepherd. 
Mm. Uh, and then, you know, if anyone wants to step out of line, the sheepdog moves in and we, we laugh at sheep. But humans have out sheep the sheep. We dispense with the bloody sheepdog. Right. <laughs> we police each other now. It's, it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. And so you've got a, a very uh, clear system in place whereby you come into the world and immediately your programming, your bubble starts to be formed because overwhelmingly most people, their parents will have been through the system you're about to go to, uh, through. So they bought this bubble and they start passing that on to you, not through malevolence most of the time, because they, they believe it's the right thing to do. And you go to what's called school and an authority figure is standing in front of you from the earliest age, like four years of age or something. And they're telling you um, what is, what isn't, what's right, what's wrong, what has happened, what hasn't happened, when you can uh, uh, go to the toilet, when you can um, eat, when you can uh, leave to go home, when you have to be there. So this programming of the bubble, which is twofold, one, to program your perceptions in a very narrow band so that uh, the, the authorities in, in totality, what I call the global cult, can, um, can hold you in that perceptual bubble. And secondly, to get you in a, um, a mode, a response system from the earliest age of obeying authority. Mm. So when authority says something, you do it, or if you don't want to do it, then at least you're too frightened not to do it, so you do it anyway. And then you go through school and university with this, this bubble being formed, what I call the postage stamp consensus, mm. which um, is uh, basically what the so-called education system is. It's a, a tiny, narrow band of potential possibility. And if you're going to pass your exams, you have to keep uh, – uh, telling the system what it's told you to believe. And then you go out into the world of work and you're meeting all these people who've been through the same system you've been through only earlier. And they're confirming to you that what you've been told is real and what you've been told is how things are, is how things are. So basically, if, if you only look in the uh, mainstream of everything, mainstream media, which is pounding out the same uh, bubble information 24 seven, mm -hmm. uh, the, the mainstream education, mainstream uh, anything, medicine, science, academia, you're gonna get the bubble story. And so when that's all you ever hear, um, then you're very likely to believe that's how things are. But what is uh, happening to more and more people, of course, including yourself over the years, mm -hmm. is you start to see it is a bubble. You start to see it is a box. And you start asking, well, hold on a second. What lies beyond it? And when you do that, you start looking for um, other ways of explaining the world, reality, life, yourself then um, suddenly the world looks a very different place. And that's what they desperately don't want to happen. And that's why we've got this uh, just crazy level of censorship now uh, for anyone. If you look at it, if you look at what, what is being censored, it's anyone that is um, communicating outside the bubble. So if you don't believe the bubble version of uh, human caused climate change, uh, the bubble version of Ukraine, the bubble version of everything, then you're censored or abused uh, because uh, the idea is that people only hear, see and hear the bubble narrative. And that's what the censorship is all about. Mm. That was rich, very uh, that deep. What do what you think caused that? Is it, is it the, uh, what do you think that, cause people to think that way? Well, it's because it's, it's the way the system is set up and you have to be, I, I wrote a book, uh, the, the, the last one, I've just had one published called The Trap. The one before that was called Perceptions of a Renegade Mind. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a, a renegade mind is what we desperately need. And it's one which 
um, looks at all possibility and then makes its own mind up which possibility it, um, it thinks is credible or mm. even, you know, call the police. Um, mm. it's, uh, it, it makes up its own mind what it believes. It doesn't need <laughs> external uh, um, kind of um, stimulation of any kind. Mm. Uh, and, and so um, the system has been set up. This is, you see, this is what I think people uh, need to grasp, even many of the people in what's called the alternative media. Mm. Um, not all of them, but, but still many. Um, I was reading an article this afternoon and uh, it, it was about, um, he said, he said the, the world is full of cults. Mm. He said, we've got a human caused climate change cult. We've got a woke cult. We've got this cult, we've got that cult. Mm. Um, and I thought, well, yeah, but you, you, you're one step from the finish. Mm. They're all expressions of the same cult. The world is being transformed uh, into a global fascist dictatorship, um, which will, uh, if we allow it to happen, be uh, run by a world government that will not be elected. It will be bureaucrats and technocrats and scientists and academics and doctors and people like that um, to dictate to every community on earth the same um, impositions of this, uh, this bigger plan for, for global control. And mm. you know, the, the, how, how can it be done? Uh, th there are certain things that if people uh, can, can grasp them, uh, and they're very simple, then mm. the world immediately becomes so easy to read. Daily events become so easy to read. Mm. And, one of them is to understand how it's possible for a few to control 8 billion. And if people just visualize a spider's web around the world mm -hmm. with a spider in the middle, mm -hmm. and the spider is in the shadows, you never see it. No, then never puts itself on public display. But it, it, it um, imposes its agenda on the world, and I mean the world, mm -hmm. via this web. So immediately around the web, you've got the most exclusive secret societies. Mm. Then you, you come out from the, the spider and you're hitting the secret societies we know about, the uh, Freemasons, the inner core, the inner core of the Jesuit order, Opus Dei, uh, the Knights of Malta, Knights Templar, etc. Mm. And, and then you come to a point in the web, what I call the cusp. Mm. And at this point, You've got a series of organizations like the Bilderberg Group, the Council on Foreign Relations in America, the Trilateral Commission, uh, the United Nations is part of this as well, um, and the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome was created in 1968 specifically to exploit environmental concerns to justify the centralization of global power. That's where the human caused climate change hoax came out of. And then in this cusp uh, part of the web, you've got all these think tanks and uh, non-governmental organizations, so many of them funded by George Soros. Mm. And their job at this point in the web is to take the agenda coming from the spider and to play it out in the world of the scene, the world of governments, government agencies, banks, and corporations, the education system, all the things that we can see, World Health Organization. And so when you see that um, these organizations and happenings in the world of the scene that we see on the news every day, they're not random. This is the point. They look random. They're not random. They're, they're coordinated and, uh, through this web. So once you realize that this web exists and its agenda is to create a global fascist dictatorship uh, in which um, every community will be dictated through this <coughs> point, then the world starts to make sense. And I have this fra mm. phrase I use, um, uh, know the outcome and you'll see the journey. If you know where we're being taken, you see the stepping stones to that every single day happening. But if you don't know where we're being taken, those stepping stones look totally random. Man, oh man. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely time to wake up, man. It's definitely time to wake up. and. Um, Having you on here, drop this is is incredible, and it's like one big whole system, like you breaking down that's 
that we've been under it all this time, brainwashed, you know, by these uh, secret societies. I know you dropped a lot about the Illuminati. Where are they um, today with it? I know, you know, what's your opinion? Go ahead. Well, what, 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 what has happened is that they've been manipulating under the radar for literally centuries. And the process can basically be seen by the centralization of power. So the world started out, well, you know, at least one point in history as people in tribes. And the people in the tribe made the decisions about the tribe. Then we had this uh, big step forward in this agenda, which was the creation of nations. Um, and nations are a stepping stone in this cult's agenda. They're not the end. So suddenly you had lots of tribes come together all around the world to form a nation. Now um, a few people at the center of the nation are dictating to all the former tribes. And then in Europe, we've got this European Union, and that's the next stage, and there's lots of other ways that these um, things are happening. What, what they want, I've been writing about this since the 1990s, mm -hmm. is a North American Union of Mexico, uh, the United States, and Canada, and eventually the whole of the Americas in their version of the European Union. They're, in, they're starting to talk about it again now. They talked about it a lot in the 1990s, then it went quiet. Now they're starting to talk about it again. Um, and why? Because what that's doing is bringing all the nations, having the tribes brought together as nations, now they're bringing the nations together under a central dictatorship. In Europe, mm. um, a few bureaucrats in Brussels are dictating to basically the entirety of Europe in terms of the countries that are members of the EU. Mm. Um, and so an, an, another part of this journey of centralization and expansion of this cult was colonialization. Because um, it came out of Europe, the, and the, the cult was running Europe way back then. And you had the British Empire, with, on which it was said the sun never set, because it was so vast. You had the Belgian Empire, the Dutch Empire, all of them. And they went out across the world, and they took over uh, countries all over the world. And then we had this um, illusion, it was an illusion, of decolonization, uh, where the European powers appeared to roll back uh, and give independence to the former colonies. That's what they did on the surface. Um, but there's two types of control. One mm. is overt control that you can see, mm. and that has a finite life, because if you can see it, then eventually people will rebel against it. The greatest form of control is covert control, where you're being controlled, but you think you're free. And mm. so what happened is when the, the, the colonial powers appeared to withdraw back to Europe, they left out in those countries, mm. particular families, family bloodlines, and their secret society network. Mm -hmm. And they've gone on manipulating, controlling those countries ever since. They put puppet prime ministers and puppet presidents into power to give the people uh, in many African countries, South American countries, et cetera, Asian countries, the illusion that they're choosing their leader when actually um, it's being chosen for them by this, this cult. And, um, and then the final part of it, the, the, the completion of the, the, the uh, expansion from, uh, from, of the cult to global uh, status was what we call globalization. Globalization, which is the centralization of power, corporations, everything, mm. money, government in, in, uh, on a global level, is, um, is this cult um, going for its, um, its world government dictatorship, which I've been writing about for 32 years nearly. Mm. Um, and so um, that's um, the, the way they have uh, centralized power. So uh, the reason centralization of power has got quicker and quicker and quicker is because the more you centralize power, the more power you have at the center to centralize even quicker. So the speed gets faster. Mm. And we're now at the point where um, they want to go global and uh, they uh, have 
um, like I say, been uh, doing it under the radar, behind the scenes where people couldn't see it. Because if you want to totally transform human society, which is what the game is, they call it the Great Reset, mm. Um, then there comes a point where human society has to be transformed in a way that people can see it. And that's where we are now. And that's why people are looking up and going, what's going on? What's happening? The whole world's changing. What's going on? We've reached that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, when we, you know, people say, well, you know, what's the time scale? Well, they're telling us the time scale. They keep using the same uh, year over and over, 2030. They've been doing it for a, a long time on all these different uh, aspects of this um, agenda for the world. Uh, 2030 comes up over and over and over again. Wow. Yes, y'all. Man, that was great. Uh, make sure y'all hit that super chat if y'all want to, any questions. For, yeah, we got a couple of super chats already. Yes. For, uh, we can dive into them right now if you'd like. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Because he went into uh, this rap. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's go. We got a couple of questions for you. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. All right Shout out to Danny Salinas. He asks a question from Mr. David Ike. Who is controlling humans' destiny and what's your opinion on spiritual warfare? Well, um, Good You've question. got two hours, have you? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, because I could talk about that for two hours. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's, that, that's, that's what's going on. Right. Um, uh, spiritual warfare, that, that you know, gives it a religious connotation. Um, but mm. then again, you know, you know, one of the things I've found over the years mm -hmm. of researching this is, you know, we talk about uh, Christianity, we talk about Islam, uh, talk about all these different religions, talk about Judaism. Um, and they appear to be different religions. And in some ways they are, yes. But it's amazing, the common themes. Um, I um, met a wonderful man, became a great friend of his for a long time. He's no longer with us now, unfortunately, called Credo Mutwa. He's a, he was a Lulu shaman. He was a very, very great man, a very, um, right. uh, very intelligent man. Uh, and he talked talk to me about a non-human force. Um, ultimately, it's a, a, a form of consciousness that mm -hmm. we're looking at, hence spiritual war. Um, that was manipulating human society. He mm -hmm. called them the Chittahuri, the children of the serpent. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you start, then you start looking at Christianity. Mm -hmm. And they, start, they talk about the demons. They say the demons mm -hmm. are um, involved in the manipulation of the world. Um, then you look at Islam and they talk about the jinn mm -hmm. um, operating from the unseen. And this is a common theme. I've talked to Aboriginals in, um, in Australia. They have this, a similar concept of this unseen force that's mm. not human in the sense that we perceive human. That mm. is ultimately manipulating human society. So where from? Well, because people say, well, why can't I see them then? Why can't I see them if these, this uh, non-human force is manipulating human society? Where are they? And this is where we come back to um, the bubble. Mm -hmm. When you start looking outside the bubble, you realize that this reality that we call the human world is absolutely nothing like we think it is. And this is mainstream mm -hmm. science, mate. This is not pulled out of the ether. According to mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum, which is basically this reality, is 0.005% of what exists in what they call the universe. Mm -hmm. But visible light, which is the only band of frequency that we can see, everything we see is within visible light, is a smear, a fraction, a tiny fraction of the 0.005%. So we are basically living in what you might call a television channel wow. within a certain band of frequency. And all wow. the other channels, all the other realities um, share the same space that this one does, and we do, but it, we don't know about them in the same way that a radio station um, uh, in a different place on the dial doesn't interfere with a radio station on a different place in the dial. They're, they share the same space. I mean, I could put my radio on now and tune it to a certain 
frequency and I'll get a certain station. I'll mm-hmm. change it and I'll get a different station. But the station I've moved off hasn't disappeared. It's still there. It's just that I'm not tuned to it. Mm. And basically the human body mm. and the five sense system of, of human uh, information decoding, that's what it is, mm. um, is decoding a particular range of frequency. And outside of that range of frequency, infinity exists. This is, you know, when people talk about paranormal, right. they talk about ghosts and stuff. Well, what are ghosts? And, you know, well, they're entities that operate very close to this reality, close enough for them to be seen by some people, but not close enough to be um, seen all the time. And, you know, when you, um, you hear these stories, which, of course, the bubble perception will dismiss immediately, uh, they, people say, um, I woke up and, and there was this entity. It was an alien and it was at the end of the bed and, mm. and it appeared out of nowhere and then it disappeared. Or someone will say, oh, well, I saw this, this, this spacecraft, this saucer, and it just appeared out of nowhere and then it disappeared and I don't know where it went. And of course, the bubble mentality says, you're mad, mate. What are you on? How many have you had? Mm. But this is the point of keeping people in the bubble. It keeps them in ignorance of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So when an entity or a spacecraft or whatever um, is outside the the frequency band of visible light, we can't see it. Mm -hmm. The body cannot see outside that frequency, mainstream science. So when Mm -hmm. these entities or um, uh, a craft, whatever, enter visible light, they appear to us to have come out of nowhere, mm. entered our visual frequency. And when they leave, they appear to have disappeared. They haven't. They've just left that frequency band that we can see. Mm. And, and, and so what you have, and, and all these ancient cultures talk about it, mm. and I've talked to people, so many people, yeah. within the military-industrial intelligence complex, you might say, say around the world Mm -hmm. and people who've had experience of that and they tell you the same story that Mm. this reality is being manipulated by a non-human force that operates outside the frequency band of human sight Uh, although it can enter like i say and that's when people say i had this uh, interaction with this um, non-human entity so so that's what's um that's what's happening and all the ancient cultures talk about it and and then you look at the world now and you say, well, hold on a minute. Why is, it, why is the agenda that we're being subjected to so anti-human? It's all anti-human. Mm. Um, you've got um, uh, human-caused uh, climate change, which is a, a hoax to demonize um, carbon dioxide. Mm. Carbon dioxide is the gas of life. If carbon mm. dioxide falls to a certain level, mm. the natural world starts to die. The natural world breathes or takes in carbon dioxide as we mm. breathe oxygen. Mm-hmm. So uh, now that they're changing the atmosphere through some of the things that Gates is doing, mm. we've got this guy, Elon Musk, a total fraud, by the way. <laughs> who, who, um, yes. <laughs> with these, the SpaceX low-orbit satellites firing... Uh, 5G and, 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 and other electromagnetic uh, um, systems at the Earth, mm-hmm. uh, the, the very atmosphere that we live in, all this is going on. They want to replace uh, human thinking. This is what they're saying openly now. Mm. Michael Ray Kurzweil at, um, at Google, a so-called futurist, um, mm. and uh, he's been saying for some time that in the period of 2030, that year again, they want to be connecting uh, the human brain to artificial intelligence. And he's very open in the sense that he says, once that connection is made, that uh, human, uh, humans will do more and more of their thinking from AI, AI will do more and more of human thinking mm-hmm. until in the end, and these are his words, human thinking is basically negligible. So, mm-hmm. I mean, how anti-human can you get? And this mm. whole thing that's going on, you know, with this metaverse, 
Mm. It's all about pulling our sense of awareness into cyberspace and into AI so that um, we can be externally controlled without even having to manipulate information anymore. Our thoughts and perceptions will come direct. Now that, and there's lots more I could talk about, is an anti-human agenda. So mm. wouldn't it make sense if ultimately it was a non-human force that was behind it? And it, and it, and it is. And this cult, as I call it, um, is the a way that that which exists beyond human sight manipulates the world that humans live in. That's how it, how it works. So that uh, massive uh, spider's web operates in the world of the seen and in terms of secret society is the world of the unseen. And the spider at the center of it ultimately is not human. So these people like Gates and Klaus okay. Schwab, the World Economic Forum, who everything he says is, uh, comes out of his mouth is the cult agenda for the world. They're all gophers. The Rockefellers are gophers. The mm. Rothschilds are gophers mm. for this non-human force. And, uh, you know, it's time to, um, to just say it. Oh, mm. what will people think of me if I say this? Well, I gave up worrying about that a very long time ago. This, this is how it is. And I spent 32 years full time researching it. And uh, more and more people are coming to the understanding that actually it's the only thing that does explain it is the fact that there's some force um, behind this that spanned all this period that's been going on. Oh, oh, beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful. Well put. Very nice. We can go to the next chat if you want. Yeah, let's go to the next one. That was well put. Oh, man, I never heard it that so, way. So, so, so just very quickly yeah. um, on the, 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 the question there. Yeah. Um, how we behave comes from how we perceive. Mm -hmm. What we perceive to be the situation dictates our behavior. So perception comes from consciousness. So you have an awakened consciousness or you have a closed minded consciousness, you have a human consciousness and you have a non human consciousness and mm. this non human consciousness that I'm talking about the, the one behind the manipulation is what Christianity calls demons it's what Islam calls jinn or certain <clears throat> parts of the jinn um, uh, theme uh, it's what Credo much were called uh, the Chittahoria. It's, it's, it's all these different expressions. It's what uh, the Gnostics um, in uh, Egypt, ancient Egypt, uh, called uh, the Archons. They mm. call them the Archons. It's uh, after uh, the Greek word for rulers. They mm. said these Archons are operating out of human sight and manipulating human society. So you see the common theme ev everywhere. And it's, it's basically, people can call it a spiritual war, and that's fair enough, but it's basically a tussle between states of consciousness. One wow. state of consciousness represented by this, um, this Beautiful. force wants to impose control uh, and feeds off suffering and all these things. He wants to divide so he can rule. And then there's another consciousness that actually wants love and joy and peace and, and, and for people to get on. And, and there's this tussle going on between the two. And it, it's a, Mm. It's a tussle that's that's basically described by all the religions, really, um, in their own way. Wow, that was beautiful. Well put. Well, oh man, that was a consciousness. Put in a, oh man, that was beautiful. All right, we're gonna go to the next. one. All right, let's go because we got a few of them piling up here. Shout out to Ralph. He says, uh, "Welcome, David Ike. Can you speak on controlled opposition and how people new to this information can avoid getting misled?" Yeah. Um, there will be a lot of that, no doubt yeah. about that whatsoever, because um, when, whenever, I mean, you, you look at, uh, what do they call it? Intel Pro, um, the, the, um, the whole FBI thing. And yeah, went on Pro. Is, um, and involved uh, people like Martin Luther King and yeah. uh, Bobby Kennedy, all these people, uh, Malcolm X, right. that were taken out. Um, you, you have a... We come back to, the, to, to what I've just said. You have a state of consciousness mm -hmm. that can see it or at least see some of it and is pushing back on what you might call the, uh, the distorted consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so the distorted consciousness has to undermine 
the awakening consciousness as best as it can. And one way you do wow. that is to, try to, is to try to infiltrate it. And that's one reason why over the last 32 years, I've always worked alone. I mean, I interact with other people and I, I do stuff on the, um, on the our media platform Iconic um, every week. But as a researcher, as someone who's coming to conclusions, I work alone. I always have. Mm -hmm. So the only thing you can do is infiltrate yourself then. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 because, because we do have to watch that. Um, and we, we have to watch, for instance, people who um, say the way to meet or beat the enemy is through fighting the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy, uh, if you're looking at this non-human force, it wants you to fight it. It mm. wants to fight. Because if you, you know, I have this phrase I've been using for decades, what you fight, you become. If you, if you look at um, uh, history almost in its entirety, you see uh, example after example where someone has come to challenge something mm -hmm. and then has become that something. They, right. they, you know, they, a lot of movies. Yep. Yeah, I, re I, re I remember talking to a police officer in London <laughs> some years ago. Who's, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was, you know, he's getting on in years. Mm. And he used to police, um, I, I remember them, they were in the 70s, as I recall. Mm -hmm. They used to do marches by a, um, a, a far-right uh, neo-fascist organization called the National Front. Mm. And then the anti-Nazi um, anti league uh, used to march at the same time against the march of the, the other uh, group. Mm. And this police officer said, you know something, he said. Um, if they didn't carry different banners and shout different things, I would never have known which was which. What mm. you fight, you become. I tell you what, they're terrified. Wow, that's so they, good. <laughs> they're terrified that we won't cooperate anymore. It's mm. a simple word. No, we're not doing it. And if enough people say no, it's unenforceable. This is the whole point that people, I think, need to grasp because of what I talked about earlier, mm. where from the earliest age, uh, kids are indoctrinated into obey authority, fear authority. What's going to happen if authority uh, doesn't like what you've done? Um, people can get into this fear mode with regard to authority. But, but what the hell is authority? Mm. If you look at 8 billion people in the world, and you look at the number of people in full knowledge who are driving this agenda, it's absolutely tiny, it's tiny. If you go to the core of the core of this global cult, you'd get them into a single room. And from, from, from that, those few people ultimately, well, ultimately going um, out of the human world, but in the human world, ultimately that group are dictating the lives of 8 billion people. Now, purely mathematically, that should be impossible. A few people cannot control 8 billion. It's ridiculous. Right. The way it's done is that the 8 billion, or the great vast majority of them, obey what the few tell them. They, um, they get told what to do, and they do it. And if we didn't, when um, you can see that it's actually about enslaving the population, it's enslaving our kids, it's destroying their future, we simply don't do it. You know, you've got all these, um, uh, and, and, you know, again, because it's globally coordinated, you see the same things happening everywhere about the same time, because it's coming from a central global point. So suddenly, authorities all over the world had the same idea on the same, or in the same period anyway. Oh, I tell you what, we're going to send drag queens into schools to read stories and dance around and prance around and sexualize little kids. Mm. Now, I've got a problem against drag queens. I mean, all the best, mate. You know, live your life as you choose, uh, uh, you see fit. Right. As long as you don't impose it on anyone else. But these, it's happening all across America. It's starting to happen. It's happening in Britain. Right. It's happening in, in, in country after country. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the, uh, 
the, the response to that is not to moan about it. It's to say, my child is not going to that school until that stops. We are not having it. And, and you know, if you take the people who, in full knowledge who are driving this, you take all the law enforcement and you take those numbers away from 8 billion, you're still looking at a tiny number of people. Mm. And this is, this is how it works. And it's all a psychological game. If they can get your psychology, they get your perceptions, they get your behavior. So there's two types of people. This is never more important than today that have been responsible for every tyranny in history. One group is that which just does what authority tells it without question. Mm. Do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know best, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I know my place, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got another group that doesn't want to do it. They, they maybe have a feeling there's something not right here. I, I, I really don't want to do this. But they do it anyway because they're frightened of not doing it. They're frightened of authority. And that leaves the third group, which has ended every tyranny in history, which is the group that says, I can see what you're doing and I'm not cooperating with you. So when you tell me to do something that I can see as an ulterior motive that's bad for me and humanity, I'm not doing it. And, you know, I'll give you a quick example. Mm -hmm. The British government um, said uh, outrageously that they should go to jail in totality for the rest of their lives. If only we would realize no is the most powerful word in the English language. Mm -hmm. If you wow. say it and you mean it, no, not doing it, not having it, then the whole house of cards comes down because we, we see the so-called, um, you know, hierarchy mm -hmm. uh, of control, but it literally is a house of cards. Mm -hmm. It's not a solid structure. Mm -hmm. It's a house of cards. And who's holding the cards together? We are, by our acquiescence to what the few at the top tell us. When we stop doing that, uh, the game's over. And one other thing, very quickly, mm. when we stop allowing ourselves to be divided and ruled, when you realize that the true I is consciousness, the body is a vehicle for consciousness to experience this narrow band of frequency called uh, uh, the human world. Mm. But we are consciousness. Mm. You are a black man. Mm. I'm, a, I'm called a white man. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are expressions of the same consciousness. We, we, we are just having different experiences for a brief period called a human life. Mm -hmm. and, so what they are, are doing all the time is that they're, they're saying, identify who you are Mm -hmm. by the labels of the human world. Identify the I as I am a man, I am a woman, I am this sexuality, that sexuality, I am this race, that race, this income bracket, that income bracket, and so on. That's how you define yourself. No, all of the things that I've just said are experiences. They're not labels, they're not us, they're experiences that we're having. The true mm. I is consciousness, an eternal state of awareness. And that's what leaves the body at the end of what we call a human uh, life. Now, when you see that, you see, A, judging someone by the color of their skin is, is childlike nonsense, mm. but also to allow ourselves to be divided on the base of the color of the skin or the basis is also childlike nonsense. But this cult has to get us to see the world like that mm. so that we can fight among ourselves. So someone who's uh, got lots of money will look at someone who has nothing and mm. it won't be a problem to them because I'm all right, Jack. But actually, we're all the same consciousness. Why should you have all that and this person have nothing? Well, this person's actually working harder than you are for his nothing or her nothing. Um, it's, it, it brings us back to this 
understanding that we are all one consciousness having different experiences. We are unique expressions of that consciousness, yes, because the experiences uh, uh, that we have that are different to other people, they give us a certain view of life, a certain uniqueness, which is brilliant to celebrate your uniqueness. But on the understanding of realizing that we're all one consciousness, we're all an expression of a, a, an eternal state of consciousness, and to allow the labels of a human life to divide and rule us is, um, is how we got into this mess. Mm, absolutely. And they're trying to uh, make everyone feel submissive and uh, live in fear from all the, uh, you know, the fluoride in the water and like by poisoning us, everybody in the air and everything, just creating a submissive environment. Exactly. And that was perceptual control. And as the, as the, the, the questioner rightly says, making people submissive and you know this this is this is a, a really important point what's the antidote to submissiveness it's self-respect self-respect yeah. so if you're believing what authority tells you without question you have no self-respect you have no self-respect for your own perceptions your own mind to say, well, okay, you're telling me this, but I'm going to check this out before I believe you. And then you have the second group I talked about that doesn't want to do what authority says, but does it anyway, because they fear the consequences. That is a lack of self-respect. And then the third group, which sees it and he says, no, we're not doing it. We're not having it. What is their, what makes their backbone stiff? Self-respect. You Gates, you Swab, you Biden, not that it's <laughs> Biden, he didn't know his name, wow. um, are not going to tell me what I do with my life. You're not going to do it. I'm not having it. Because if I concede that to you, given you're a bunch of prats, I'm conceding my self-respect to you. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because the whole thing is psychological. Mm. A few can only control 8 billion through the psychology of the 8 billion. And if you notice, there's always been morons in politics and political power. There always has been. But mm. look at the number now. Look at the number of them all over the world. Johnson in Britain, Macron in France, mm. Trudeau, my God, in Canada, Ardern mm. in, um, in New Zealand. Um, and and this, this guy, Daniel uh, Andrews, the uh, premier of uh, Victoria in Australia, complete lunatic. And so why would they put blatant morons in power at this time? Because it's psychological. If they can get you to do what you know is a moron, tells you to do, they got you. They got your self-respect. Mm. And once your self-respect is gone, only submission remains because there's no bulwark against that submission and that's exactly uh, what the, the, the caller was talking about and he was spot on yeah wow so we're going to run through the rest of these super chats a lot of these i think you may have already answered um already so um you know feel free to keep them as brief as you'd like um so this next one here is uh, saying, are the Archons a real threat or a part of a holographic matrix perpetuated by the puppets and their overlords? How do we have clarity amidst the chaotic madness, David? How do we escape the matrix? I, I love it. I love it. You say, uh, uh, please feel free to keep your answers short. And then you give me a question. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. That, that, that's why I don't, I don't want to overwhelm you, but you know, it's just the questions that yeah, they're asking. But, um, yeah, I don't mind. But uh, there we go, yeah, at least. This, this ain't going to be that short. Yeah. One of the things I said in um, at the turn of just after the turn of the millennium mm. is that this reality that we call the human world is actually a simulation. Mm -hmm. And I said the um, limits of the simulation in our reality is the speed of light. Speed of light is not the fastest speed. It's pedestrian compared with what's possible. Mm. But um, it's the fastest speed. Uh, within uh, this simulation. And 20 years later, in uh, the spring of 2021, there was an article in uh, Scientific American by an academic guy who said he, that he concluded that we do live in a simulation, 
And the limits of the simulation in this, at this level, I would say, um, is the speed of light. And he related the speed of light to processing speed on a computer system. Mm -hmm. See, you know, he, point, he, po he, he pointed out that when you um, create a virtual reality computer game, which is, this is a vastly, vastly advanced version of it, then um, you, uh, you write the rules of the game. Now, I've been saying for decades that what we call the laws of physics in our reality are actually the rules of the simulation that's been been written. You can't do this. This is this is uh, the limitation of that. It's a limitation of that because the rules of the game demand that. Which is why when people like near death experiences have left the body and then come back, they describe a totally different reality outside the body as they do here, uh, with different what they call laws of physics, different possibilities. Uh, and so um, this. Um, simulation has actually been created by this non-human force to hijack our perception. And this simulation, when it started, they've been changing it ever since, but when it started, it was a digital copy of something that actually does exist, uh, a, a, a reality that, um, that, it, that does exist and still exists, but we are tuned to this one. And um, so when, um, when you look at uh, the, the way that um, the simulation works, it's hijacking perception. That's the whole reason for it, uh, to put you in a fake reality that you uh, believe to be uh, real. Now, I mentioned earlier uh, this uh, Gnostic um, belief system goes back way back in the ancient world. Well, in 1945, mm. a earthen jar was found um, at a place called Nagamadi in Egypt, uh, about 75 miles north of Luxor. Mm. And in that earthen jar were writings by these Gnostic people uh, that are estimated to have been put in there about 400 AD. And a fifth of quite very substantial writings. And a fifth of these uh, writings talked about these archons, which they described in, you know, in my terms as a non-human force that was manipulating human society. Mm. And what they said, I nearly blew me away when I, when I read it because um, of what I'd said you know, about the simulation. They said 400 AD that these archons had created what we call the physical world. And they had done it by making a, quote, bad copy of what they call prime reality, this reality that exists beyond the simulation, which is a copy of it, basically, a, 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 a fake copy of it. Um, and, and that basically humanity was trapped in this, um, in this fake copy, believing it to be real. And that the real world was outside of the simulation, not inside of it, what I would call a simulation. And interestingly, also, mm. in these writings, they said that uh, one of the great uh, gifts, one of the great abilities of these archons was uh, what they called, what we would translate it as, virtual reality. Mm. Making people think they were experiencing something that they were not actually experiencing except in their perceptions. Mm. And since I said that about that it being a simulation uh, it, just after the turn of the millennium, uh, lots of people now in mainstream science are saying, actually, it does look like we live in a simulation. And, and if, if, you, if you go down that road, all these mysteries of, um, of science and reality, they start to disappear because the world mm. suddenly uh, makes sense. There was a guy uh, called James Gates, who was a physicist, who was a science advisor to the Obama administration. And he led a team um, looking at uh, the possibility that we live in a simulation. And what he found, they found, in the energetic fabric of our reality 
were, were codes that relate to what we would call computer codes uh, and search engine uh, uh, codes. There was another guy called um, Silas Bean who led a, a, a team at uh, the University of Bonn in Germany asking the same question and they concluded that we almost certainly do live in a simulation. There's a guy at uh, NASA called Rich Terrill wow. who works in the computer area of, um, of NASA who went public a few years ago and said that he'd concluded that we live in a simulation, a holographic simulation, in other words, illusory physical simulation, which is what I've been saying uh, for, for decades. And that um, therefore, if it's a simulation, then some force must have created it because it's not natural. Uh, and, and so, you know, Mm. The, the, the weight of the evidence is starting to tease open minds, even in mainstream science, to say, well, hold on a minute, maybe, maybe this is a simulation. And, um, and so you've got this, um, this situation where this non-human force has created this virtual reality illusion. And I explain in my books um, how it works and how we decode it. Uh, and... Um, uh, and their uh, network within the simulation is manipulating uh, human society uh, in the knowledge that it's a simulation. I mean, people like, you know, you know, Elon Musk, Do you remember when Elon Musk said, I, I think we could live in a simulation. Yeah. Well, he knows we do. That's <laughs> yeah. the point. He knows we do. Mm -hmm. Your Gateses and these people and your right. swabs, they know we live in a simulation. Uh, they just don't want us to know. But, so it's very much like the Matrix. I assume you've seen the Matrix movie already. Well, you know, when the Matrix, when the first Matrix movie came out, I couldn't believe my luck. I don't know the motivation for for um, for making it, mm. um, but it was it was a godsend to me because there was a visual um, representation of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, and and if you look at it, okay, they're outside the Matrix. Um, they're in the ship, right? Mm -hmm. And they go in the matrix with their minds. There's mm. that probe goes right. into the back of the net, yeah. into the brain, basically, the brain stem. They always got me, yeah. Yeah, and they go into the matrix with their minds. And they have bodies in the matrix with their minds. And they come out of the matrix uh, back to their quote, body on the ship, which has not moved. It's all in their minds. And mm. this new book that I, that's just come out uh, called The Trap, and I've done an audio version of it as well. You can get it at davidike.com. Uh, uh, um, okay. it, it goes into this whole area very deeply of how this entire reality is in our minds. Uh, mm. And so when you take your mind back and you open your mind from the bubble, you start to see things that the bubble mind will not be able to see. Mm. The whole foundation of this control of humanity is to keep us perceiving everything, including the self, only through the five senses. Can I see it, touch it, hear it, taste it? Well, that it exists. If, it, if I can't, then it can't exist. This is basically the, uh, the foundation of so much of what we call mainstream science. Mm. But when you, when you open your mind, you go beyond the five senses, you start to see and perceive and understand and get insights into things that you uh, would never see before. Because if you look at the five senses, um, they decode the world in a particular way. So I'm looking around, uh, around me now, and I can see a computer, I can see lights, uh, I can see a table, and between all the forms of things, what we call things, it seems to be empty space. That's how the five senses decode the world. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason for that is coming back to this um, band of frequency, visible light, the five senses, the sight senses, can only decode that band of frequency that we call things, forms. 
And anything that's not in the frequency of form, the five senses cannot see. So the perception, therefore, becomes things with empty space in between. That's how the five senses see the world. So you can understand why people in that mode believe that everything is apart from everything else and not connected. Mm -hmm. But if you go deeper into the field where the five senses can't go, you realize that actually be, this empty space is not empty at all. It's a, um, it's a field, an infinite field of consciousness of energy. And you can hmm. symbolize it, uh, even more than symbolize it, as a Wi-Fi field. Mm -hmm. So the Wi-Fi field, um, okay, if this where I am now has Wi-Fi, well, where is it? I can't see it. Mm -hmm. But if I tune this computer to Wi-Fi. Great example. Oh, I, that's great. Suddenly, a, a whole reality that exists outside my visual perception, Wi-Fi, becomes pictures, videos, people talking, uh, texts, graphics. Mm -hmm. And, and all, what the computer has done is take that information from the Wi-Fi field, a radiation field, which we can't see, and it's decoded it into what we see on the screen in a completely different form to, 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 to what it is as a Wi-Fi field. Now, we're doing exactly that. We're doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, a Wi-Fi field is mm. frequency. It's vibrating radiation information, right? Okay, and the computer mm. picks that up and decodes it into what we see on the screen. And if you think about it, the World Wide Web, mm. which is a complete global reality that anyone can tap into if they have a computer or a phone or something. The only place the World Wide Web exists in the form that we see it on the screen is on the screen. Everywhere else, it's Wi-Fi wow. field, codes and, and, and plugins and all that stuff. Only on the screen do we see uh the internet as we perceive the internet and we're doing exactly the same one of the things i pointed out in the books wow. is that the technological world that's unfolding so fast is actually mimicking the reality that we're experiencing mm -hmm. so when, mm. when, okay you you put a headset on mm. uh, in a computer game right mm -hmm. and you see people thrashing around. You know, they're in an empty room. There's nothing going on, but they're thrashing around because they're responding to the information being fed to what? To their five senses by the game. Um, and therefore, it becomes real to them. Now, look at, look at this. I mentioned this in my book, The Trap. Imagine you come out of the womb with a headset on, and you keep that headset on your entire wow. life until Damn. you reach the other end, you are going to believe that what the headset is feeding you is true reality, <laughs> even though it's not, right? So this is how it works. Um, and this is not me making it up. This is, you look at mainstream science, you'll find this. Mm. Um, when I'm, every, everything in this reality is vibrating information it's waveform vibrating information right? including my speech so i'm talking to you now but the words that i'm speaking are not passing between you and me and the people listening to this a vibrational field is my vocal cords are vibrating a field of information which through my my um, my, my my system of communication it is vibrating a certain way. Different words, different sentences, they're different vibrations. And they then go out and people pick that vibration up, what we call sound waves, mm -hmm. and ears, and this is how all the senses work, decodes that sound wave into electrical information. And it communicates the electrical information to the brain, 
which then decodes it into digital and holographic information. <laughs> and, and so um, every, everyone works the same. Hmm. The, um, the, uh, the, the, the tongue is picking up vibrational information, turn it into electrical information. It's communicating it to the brain, which then says, oh, that's horrible, or oh, that's lovely, when it decodes it. And there are, um, there are pain relief um, systems now. I, I, I watched this done once, where the aim of it is to stop the communication from the point of pain to the brain. So you get a bang on the leg, say, or you've broken your leg and you've had an operation on the, on, on the leg and it's very painful. This um, system seeks to stop a signal, electrical signal, going from the point of the pain to the brain. Mm. Because unless it hits the brain and the brain decodes it, you will not feel pain. Yeah, you stop the perception. Yeah, that's true. Everything is going on in here. Mm. And so, you know, I go into this in the books in detail, but I'm looking around this room now, and everything I'm seeing, which I, I perceive in the experience of being outside myself, is actually in here in the same way that the Wi-Fi field is in here. So the only place this world exists as we experience it is in here, just as the whole only place the Wi-Fi field as we experience it exists on the screen in the computer. Same principle. It's mm -hmm. the same. Principle. So we're like transistors. Like we're able to receive information, but we're also able to transmit information, too, because, you know, our heart is putting out electromagnetic pulses. And this idea where we can't see, you know, um, ultraviolet rays, we can't see gamma rays and everything, but it's there, uh, yeah. ex explains why the law of attraction would work or the 12 universal laws. Hey, oxygen. Yeah, I mean, th this is the whole point. Everything um, is a vibration, so a, a frequency. So the, when you feel emotion, when you feel hatred or anger or resentment or whatever, uh, or fear, that's the big one. Mm. These are low, slow vibrational states. When you feel joy and love and happiness, these are high vibrational states. And so um, what they want to do is to bring us into low vibrational states because these vibrational states relate to this archontic force, which mm. is a low vibrational state. That's why it does what it does does it doesn't want people in high vibrational states it wants people in low vibrational states that's why it wants you trapped in the five senses and also why it wants mm. you in states of fear and anxiety and resentment because these are low low slow frequencies which keep you in its if it's in its vibrational layer if you like so this is why people who are like depressed or whatever they'll say god i feel so heavy today oh, why do you feel heavy because the, the state that you are, the emotions that you are generating as frequencies, what we call vibes, mm. um, are low and slow. And so your energy field gets low and slow and denser. And you feel, oh, I feel so heavy today. And then someone comes in, into the room and feels great joy and uh, something's happened or whatever. And they say, oh, I feel so light today because that's a fast frequency that's quickening your energetic field uh, in its frequency and thus you feel light and not heavy. Uh, and, and so all these things are known about by this cult and this is the, the, the foundation of the control. Why are secret societies secret? To keep secrets, who from? The population. So this secret society network passes on all this knowledge through the highest inner levels of this secret society web, the cult, and keeps it from the population. And the population, therefore, has no idea of what is actually possible. They have no idea of the world they actually live in, and thus they cannot 
conclude what's going on because they don't have the information to make that conclusion because it's kept from them mm -hmm. over here with the with the cult. And what people like me are doing is is taking that information as we un you know, cover it and passing it on to the population and saying, this is what they, they don't want you to know. And what we talked about today, this has been great. I've loved it. Mm -hmm. um, is um, is what they don't want you to know. And there's so much more, of course. Yeah, they don't want us to know that serotonin is not actually the happy hormone. Serotonin is actually the submissive hormone. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we're supposed to be more pro-dopamine and less serotonin, but they want us to have less dopamine and more serotonin so that we're more submissive. Well, th th that's an interesting point because this is another. There are certain things you pick up over the years that are real gold dust in terms of understanding everything from one thing you can understand everything and this cult works with the process and the technique of inversion everything it tells you is an inversion of the truth you you look at satanists because the satanism is absolutely connected to this cult the number of people famous people in the world that I've followed or uh, tracked out over the years that's led to Satanism and pedophilia is unbelievable. There's reasons for that, I explain in the books, but it's all inversion. So if you look at Satanism, look at its symbols. It's the inverted pentagram. It's the inverted cross. Everything is upside down on purpose. Right. So um, take- uh, The peace sign. Uh, yeah, t take any, yeah, take anything uh, that they tell you and invert it and you're going to get far closer to the truth, maybe even right on the truth, yeah. than you are if they take um, what they're telling you. The number of things I've come across over the years, one after the other, that you realize the truth is an absolute inversion of what they are, um, are telling you. They, they tell you you've got to lower your cholesterol. Yeah. They tell you you've got to take statins to lower your cholesterol because because oh, it's bad cholesterol, bad, bad. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, cholesterol is absolutely vital to turning sunlight into vitamin D, mm -hmm. right? Mm. And and if you don't have enough cholesterol, you will not. Um, take in enough vitamin D from the sun because the process that, that, that takes that, that turns one into the other, is a vital, a vital central element of it is cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So they want you to lower your cholesterol. Yeah. So you, you'll lower the amount of sunlight you're getting, for, for instance, with, and, mm -hmm. and that has multiple implications for health. Testosterone. Yeah. Testosterone, well, yeah, that, that's, the, um, that's the agenda of toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another area because if um, you don't want human 1.0 to continue because you want human 2.0, what do you have to do? You have to stop human 1.0 procreating, producing the species of human 1.0. And this is why sperm counts all over the world, particularly in the West, but all over the world, are absolutely plummeting. I say to people, go and, mm. go and do some research on it. You'll see the speed that sperm counts are plummeting. And along with sperm counts plummeting, testosterone, uh, testosterone is, is plummeting. And testosterone is that which says, I'm not having it. So more and more uh, uh, mm. men are not um, exhibiting the, um, the characteristics of the male because the testosterone is being uh, reduced. So now you, you, you go to the uh, other area here, which the doc can connect into, and that is why out of nowhere has this transgender explosion happened? Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere. It was not talked about at all, virtually not talked about, and suddenly it's dominating everything. Why? So these, these transgender activists, some of them will know what they're doing, most of them will not. They're just being played. Um, 
you want to turn the human body into a non-procreating, what does that mean? Non-gender form. That's what they want, a synthetic non-gender human. That's where they go. So, so what you do is, first of all, before you can fuse the gender into a no-gender human, you have to confuse gender in people's minds. You have to scramble their minds in relation to gender. So at one time, it's biological man, biological woman. Now, and this is why they're going for the kids in the schools, and what scrambles your idea of gender more than a, than a drag queen, a bloke with a beard and a dress, um, and they're targeting the kids because the kids are going to be the adults when they want to bring this in big time, uh, uh, full blown. And, and so um, this is not heading to the transgender human, transgender activists. It's not. It's heading for the no gender human. Now, mm. if you um, have a no gender human, that's your goal, that's where you're going, then you don't need men and women anymore. And this is why, um, again, virtually out of nowhere and then everywhere, uh, male masculinity was targeted, the, 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 the toxic masculine male. Mm. And I said when that started, I said they're coming for the women next. Mm. And now they're coming for the women. Mm. And, and why? Because if you're going to a no procreating human, you no longer need men and women because mm. they're not meant to exist as a gender in this human 2.1 uh, world that they're taking us into. And this is another reason why they um, are uh, erasing <laughs> step by step by step parental control and parental influence on their kids and they're handing it to the schools which is and their social services which is means handing it to the state and and uh so if you if you read brave new world he's talking about the fact that in the no procreating human world where humans are created in what he called world state hatcheries in different castes based on manipulating genetics, worker class and elite class and all that stuff. Mm. Um, he says in that world, there are no parents. The kids are procreated by the state and brought up by the state to do everything the state tells them without question. This is the world we're going into. And, you know, because mm. of what's happened since the COVID era began, right. more and more people are opening their minds to, well, you know, after what's happened in the last two and a half years, I mean, what's crazy anymore? But before that, as I know from my own experience, and I understand it, people, it was just too far out for people that this is going on, but it is. And um, I think the hardest thing to get across over these years um, has been the scale of pure, undiluted evil that we're talking about. And I wow. define evil as the absence of love, wow. the absence of empathy, the absence of compassion, the absence of love. The, 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 if, if you can imagine, uh, and almost everyone, if not everyone watching this show will not be able to imagine it personally, mm -hmm. people setting out to create famine, to create world wars, all of which were created by this cult as I document in the books. If you sat down and thought, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to, I'm going to think, yes, that's what I want to do. You'd think, no, what do they say? They'd never do that. No, mm. you'd never do that. They are doing it because their scale of evil is almost beyond comprehension. Divide and conquer. Mm. Yeah, that's the big one. Wow. Wake uh -oh. up. Sorry, this cat's just gonna yeah, this do his is own cat. Thing. Get out of here, wait. Dropping so much now as the cat kids came across. Usually <laughs> yeah. act crazy. Man, this is heavy. Listen, everybody yeah, it's heavy, but we need to know it, we need to face it, and then we can stop it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I go I go right, back, right. there's eight billion of right. us, and there's a relative handful of them. Uh, of course, you know, I see a way out of this. 
But only if we, if we are adult enough and mature enough to face what's going on and then say we're not having it and yeah. refuse to cooperate with it. And then it's over. That's true. Let's go, y'all. Wake up. We got uh, another question here. Um, do, are you familiar with Jordan Maxwell? I assume you are. Yeah, I know Jordan, yeah. So someone's asking, uh, do you have any knowledge on why Jordan, Jordan Maxwell's passing away was on a skull and bones date? 32222? Or was that coincidence? No, I, I, I don't know about that, but I, I, I do know uh, that I met Jordan an, a number of times over the years. Um, he was operating at the time out of um, San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, and I met him a couple of times in Europe as well. Um, that he was, um, he was very skilled in the area of um, symbolism. Yeah. And uh, symbols are very, very important because we go back to where uh, I was talking about a few minutes ago about everything's a vibration. A symbol is a vibration. It's a frequency. The nature of the symbol dictates the frequency. Again, I explain all this in the books as well. Pyramid. And, and therefore, if, 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 you know, they don't have the pyramid and all-seeing eye on the dollar bill and the reverse of the Great Seal of the United States by accident, it's by design. It's giving off a frequency. And if you look at... Um, some montages that have been done on the internet from children's cartoons and children's uh, TV programs, you will see again and again the pyramid and all seeing eye in kids' cartoons, for goodness sake. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's a frequency and frequencies carry information and they're seeking to put that information into the subconscious of those that see it. Uh, I mean, you've got the Statue of Liberty. We talk about an inversion. The Statue of Liberty is holding the, the, um, the torch. torch of Liberty. Well, yeah. that's what we're told. But the Statue of Liberty was given to New York by French Freemasons in Paris that knew exactly what it was. It's a, 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 an image of the ancient um, cult goddess going back to the ancient world. Mm. And the, um, the, the lighted torch is not a symbol of liberty, inversion, invert everything. It's a symbol of um, one name for the satanic god, Lucifer, the mm. light bringer. Um, and illuminated, illuminati, illuminated. Mm. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, the, if you, most people don't know this, and I didn't until I saw it, on, on an island in the River Seine in Paris is a mirror image of the Statue of Liberty. It's smaller, but it's a mirror image. Because mm. that's where the Statue of Liberty came from. French mm. freedom is what he, <clears throat> it, he meant. So symbolism is very, very powerful. Um, and it's, that's why it's put around us uh, all the time. And, uh, and it, it, uh, they're seeking to, to impact upon the subconscious of the population. So that, you know, if, if, they, if they communicated direct to the conscious mind, then the conscious mind's got a good chance of going, ah, I see what you're bloody doing. Mm. But if they get it into the subconscious mind, subliminally, meaning below threshold, below the threshold of the conscious mind, then it filters through to the conscious mind from the subconscious. And at that point, the person thinks they're having their own thoughts, they're having their own perceptions, their own opinions, when actually it's been put into the subconscious subliminally to feed through to the conscious mind. And that's mm. why they use subliminal advertising. Yeah, And, you know, I, I've used a picture mm. in some of my books and it's a subliminal picture. And all it is, it's four plants, flowers, plants. Mm. And there's a subliminal in it. And 95% of people don't see it. Mm. Um, they, they, they can't see it. Oh, I, I don't know what's there. And then you point it out that the white bits between the plants spell out the word sex. Mm. Now, the reason I mention that is that from that moment when you've pointed it out, who have you pointed it out to? The conscious mind. And because before it was in the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind couldn't see it. From the moment mm. you point it out, mm. every time wow. that person sees that picture again, the first thing they see is the subliminal. The first thing they see is the word sex, which mm. they couldn't see before because it's come from the subconscious to the conscious and therefore 
they can see it. And that's what, you know, people like me are doing. We're taking this stuff out of the hidden, the subconscious, and, and putting it before the conscious mind of people so that they can um, see things that otherwise they wouldn't see, not because they're stupid, but because, you know, you, you, if you don't research these things, then obviously you're not going to uh, see what's really going on. Yeah, Disney is well known for those subliminals as well. Cult <laughs> to its DNA, to the end of its fingernails, to the end of its toenails, to yeah. the end of whatever. DNA, uh, cult, Disney. Absolutely. Yeah. Cult Disney. I like that. Cult Disney. <laughs> yeah, even, even the logo has three sixes on it and everything. It's amazing how much the sixes are all over the place, especially like in the chrome symbol. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Cult oh, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to go in a sec. Um, okay. Uh, we got another one here. I wanted to uh, get to you. Someone said here they had a life altering uh, encounter with an interdimensional reptile about 12 years ago found Mr. Ike's work and it has forever changed his life. He says, thank Brilliant. you, David and priest for everything you do. Well, that's, that's, that's very kind. And, but you know, when I first came out, and of course there's people still laugh now. Why well, he says reptiles run the world and all that stuff. Okay. Well, I actually, I think there's more to know than just that. You know, I've, I've thought of looking into it. I've been re- researching this reptilian thing now for about 25 years. Uh, you haven't researched it for 25 seconds and you're dismissing it. Mm-hmm. So when, when you, um, when I came out with it, it wasn't uh, pulling it out the ether. This was talking to large numbers of people around the world, not least America, who've had the experience that the, the gentleman's talking about. Um, and then you, you hear how they describe what they experience. And the common themes are amazing. Someone on the West Coast, someone on the East Coast, someone in Australia, somewhere in Britain, they're describing the same basic experience and the same nature of the entity that they experience. So why, and people say, why can't, why can't we see these reptiles if they exist? Well, because overwhelmingly they operate outside of visible light. That's why. Mm. And when they enter visible light, you have these experiences, but it's rare compared with the amount of time that they don't enter visible light. Because... Um, if you put something on public display, if, you know, if, if these entities just appeared uh, uh, in front of everybody, you'd go, ah, I get it now. These people or these, uh, this, these entities are manipulating our world. I get it. But if you can't see them, then you wave your hand and you say, that's nonsense, that's not possible. No, Uh, this is the thing. Possibility does not exist only when people believe it's possible. Possibility exists, whether you believe it's possible or not, possibility Mm -hmm. exists. Therefore, just because people uh, think something is not possible doesn't mean it's not happening. That's the point we need to grasp. That's right. Very good. And, and, and something to help towards the end here, uh, Hidden Prophet asks, how can we bring together everyone from all colors to unite in harmony with peace and prosperity for all to go against this cult of the serpents? Yeah, well, I, mean, I kind of mentioned that earlier. You know, yeah. it's about self-identity. Um, I am not David Ike. That is the name given to an experience that my consciousness, eternal, infinite, is currently having. Um, Killer Priest is the name of an experience that you are having. You are the same eternal, infinite consciousness that I am. And if we um, go back in our self-identity of the I to that level of consciousness in which we're all a unique, unique expression, then we can start to see the nonsense of divide and rule. My religion, I see, I have no problem with people believing in different religions. I have no problem with people in different Uh, types of body. Of course I don't. Um, My problem with religion is when, and and not just religion, but all belief systems, 
People should believe whatever they want to believe. I have a simple philosophy. Do what you like as long as you don't impose it on anyone else. And But the, this is the problem. People feel the need to impose on everyone else. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a certain genetic type wants to be the, 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 the ruler that will run things. A certain income bracket wants to run things, wants to impose their will on everyone else. A certain religion wants to impose their will on everyone else, as we've seen with religions over the years, some of the horrors that they've done in the name of their religion being dominant. Um, and this is the thing. It's to realize that's all nonsense. We are all one consciousness having different experiences. And we all face a common threat from another state of consciousness that's so bewildered, so chaotic, so inverted, so distorted, that it seeks to impose its will on every other expression of consciousness in its realm. And it can only do that if we allow ourselves to be divided and ruled. And how do we do that? We self-identify with the labels of a human life instead of self-identifying with the one consciousness that we all are none excluded. Wow. Very well said. We have someone asking if you think uh, that flat earth is a psyop. Um, I, I, you know, something uh, I've, followed my intuition on everything and it's been incredibly effective for me over the decades where my intuition has told me to go here my intuition has told me to go there and i've gone there and a great understanding has followed from from that and my intuition has never told me to go down the road of the, the flat earth hmm. um, and uh, is it a psyop well there's lots of psyops around uh, but you know people must believe what they want to believe like going back to what i just said if people think, well, I've seen enough information to make me believe the earth is flat, well, you believe that. And if you haven't, well, you, I believe it's round, then, then you believe that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, the, it's the imposing of, or the seeking to impose one belief system on another. That's the problem. That, that's, that's the whole basis in so many ways mm -hmm. of the mess we've got ourselves into. Just chill out. You want to believe the earth's flat? Good on you, mate. All the best. Mm -hmm. You want to believe it's round? Good on you, mate. All the best. The problem is when that has to impose itself on that or that on that or whatever. So, um, uh, you know, anything that confuses, anything that divides um, uh, needs to be addressed because yeah. and needs to be questioned in the sense of, well, who's who or what's really behind it? Because dividing us and setting us at war with each other is actually um, uh, another major massive foundation of how we got into the situation. And, and it's really simple, you know, people say, what's the solution? I'm really not interested in solutions. I'm interested in removing the cause of the problem. Hmm. Because you look at, uh, okay, here's a solution to this, but the solution often invariably leads to another problem which needs another solution. The way to remove problems is to remove the cause of the problem. And the cause of the problem, we've discussed it here, is people believing authority without question, people being frightened not to do what authority says, even if they don't want to do it. People allowing themselves to identify with the human labels and therefore divide and rule becomes a cinch. All these things um, uh, are causes which if we didn't do them, the solution would take care of itself. We don't need a solution because without the cause, the problem can't exist. Wow. That's awesome. Man, that was beautiful, man. That you, was beautiful. you have a lot of fans in the chat. Someone says, say, uh, my dad Terry and I have every David Icke book. Um, they said he met you. Um, he, he's an, a rapper in UK named David. He said uh, you both spoke about him becoming a rapper. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, um, I've met loads of rappers uh, oh, nice. uh, over the years um, around uh, America and Britain. And uh, a lot of rappers uh, have, have seen through the, the, uh, seen through the, uh, the illusion. 
Yeah, it's, it's great to hear rappers put quotes of you into their songs. You know what I mean? Well, so, I, I, I feel very honored if they do, you know. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I mean, music's, uh, music's right. a, a great way um, uh, of getting this information across, absolutely. The number one uh, one is used is reptilians. Everybody talk about reptilians yeah. since David Ike. Well, you coined it. As a producer, I always aim to uh, tune to 432 hertz. Do you know what I mean? Just to have a better vibration, because I'm sure you already know about the tuning of the music industry being off tune, but we're trying to go with the Fibonacci and go with the 432 hertz, 528 yeah. hertz, and try to have some kind of harmony at least with the vibrations of music that we're putting out to the world. You know what I mean? Because we're not under the music Illuminati, so to speak, of the establishment trying to, you know, bring people to a lower frequency. Uh, Killer Priest music is very much high frequency, if that. You know what I mean? So uh, we're trying to maintain that and definitely be in opposition to the dark side. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> and bringing reality and bringing the truth to the people. And, and bringing truth to the people is getting people as yourself. And like he said, a collective mind, us standing upside, uh, up strong and outside the bubble, outside the box is what it's all about. And you see us bringing a reality and a truth to you. It's up to us now to stand up because the message I'm getting, what you're coming with, is just simple. Wake. Just get wake. Just be, a, just be awake. Come together and, 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 and let's form this collective, powerful uh, and take back our power. What we don't do, yeah. stop giving it away. By like giving it away that we got here. <laughs> yeah. What what'd you mean? What you said, Dave? It's by giving our power away that we got here. Mm. Absolutely. The power of this cult and its expressions in authority is only the power we give them in the form of acquiescence. Mm. Again, remove the problem uh, by removing the cause. Stop giving your power to authority. Stop doing what it tells you when quite obviously it's there just to uh, further instigate mass control. Yeah, we've got to stop being submissive and question everything. Absolutely. Especially you start questioning things, your mind opens. Mm -hmm. You don't question things, your mind stays shut. Nice. Well said. Man. Yeah. Let's make some noise for him. We got any more uh, readers? I know you have to go now uh, soon, but we have any uh, other super chats? Um, a lot of people just giving props and everything. Uh, shout out to Ceaseless. Um, one says, as human beings, are we supposed to be communicating as quickly as we do? I would assume, yeah. We just got to watch out with information, you know. But Yeah, but I mean, you know, you can, you can get information by communication. Mm -hmm. uh, verbal communication, written communication, but you can also get information from the, from the field. You yeah. know, we, we are interacting with a field of consciousness, a field of awareness that, um, that contains infinite insight, knowledge, awareness, perception. And when you go into this five sense bubble, uh, what you're doing is you're basically uh, disconnecting yourself through the bubble from this field of infinite knowledge, awareness, insight. When you open your mind, you are literally opening your mind potentially to infinite possibility, infinite knowledge, infinite insight. And that is why when people open their minds and start to question, they start to question and then their mind opens, um, they start to see how dots connect. Whereas before they couldn't see how the dots connect, they could only see dots. Then suddenly you see how they connect and the whole uh, panorama of control and panorama of infinite possibility then opens to you. That's why they want us in the five senses so we don't go through that process. Absolutely. Very well said. Awesome. Man, I mean, so informative. What's, the, uh, what's your newest book you got going? It's called The Trap. Um, it's uh, just out. It's uh, available in America. You, it won't be posted from Britain. It will be posted from within America, so you'll get it within a couple of days. Um, and I do really go deeply into um, the, whole, the whole kind of reality thing and um, where this control system is really coming from and how we can escape it, because the trap is escapable. It absolutely is, but only when you know the nature of the trap. 
Wow, I can see it's uh so it's on Amazon uh yeah, right and now. Yeah, you, know, you get it from davidike.com and there's also an, an audio version. I, I I read the book um uh, on audio that's available as well. Nice. Well, we're going to put a link to uh your website in the description box. Yes. Okay, makes and, sense. and when I come out to uh Europe, man, we have to have lunch together. Oh, you we know? will, man. Yeah. <laughs> when are you coming? Uh soon, soon, soon. We're putting some uh some dates, some dates together right now. I'll keep in touch, man. Shout out to my man Vinny too. Yeah, we'll right. definitely have to meet, mate. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we want to say shout out to Vinny B for arranging this uh meeting today. So thank you so much, Vinny B, for that. Uh this, yeah, great. this has been awesome. Uh, any other words? I mean, we can, I mean, <laughs> it's all up to the great David Icke, man. He got, um, I, I, you answered a lot of questions and, um, we got a lot of things out. We didn't go through the, the queen. I know the queen that, uh, recently passed away. And what was that about? Yeah. Don't start me. Huh? <laughs> Don't start me on the world. <laughs> oh I mean, we got a little bit of time. You know, I, I, that was one thing I really wanted yeah, to get can, into. Um, ne ne next, ne next time okay. we, can, we can have a chat about right, the world. Yeah. Yes, yes. But yeah. we got a lot of information out, though. That would be awesome yeah. to have a part two of this. Oh, do you think yeah. we could do a, a part two? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I, I, I'll talk about the royal family. I mean, mm. um, yeah. I mean, let, let's say I wasn't um, queuing for... Um, 24 hours to see the queen uh queen's coffin um you know um i i've done a lot of research into those people over the years and uh it's not nice mm. wow mm. by the way um how, how in in any free society can you have a head of state of britain and the commonwealth only on the basis of one family and who had sex with who in what order i mean it's insane uh, uh, but people, you know, still believe it because they're looking up to authority. But lots of people now in this country are rejecting the whole idea, and, and so they should. Very nice. We got someone in the chat saying that they love you, and they've been watching you since the Credo videos. Oh, yes, Credo, yeah. If, uh, yeah, I did a six-hour uh, interview uh, with Credo. That was um, amazing, too. Talking to him, uh, he's, he, was, he, was, he was an amazing man. I met him for, uh, I met him quite a few times for quite long periods. And he, he, he went on a little tour of Africa um, uh, for me and showed me all these different things um, mm. and what they mean. He, he was an amazing man. And uh, right into his 90s, he was still going. Uh, mm. He's an uh, incredible man. Uh, he transcended back to the essence, um, I take it, the way you yeah, thought he was done, Yeah. Credo for sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd have, he'd have escaped the trap. That's for sure. <laughs> he was Man, well aware of how how important was that? Oh, it's gonna go. It's gonna keep going. Yeah, we can go on gonna, forever. Huh? Yeah, because I was gonna say, yeah. how important was we'll that? Next time. You? Yeah, next time. Yeah, next time. Next time. That, love the information right. that you put out with Brian Rose on the London Reel. That was awesome. Oh, thanks, mate. And uh, I really look forward to chatting with you in England sometime. Oh yeah, we definitely gonna do that. We we definitely gonna do that. I'm I'm gonna make sure that we we do that. And um, as soon as I set up, uh, the shows are being set up right now. We're nice. Nice to them. All right. So it's been a real chat pleasure, room, man. Um, the great David Ike himself on the Killer Priest podcast. We are so honored, so blessed. We're gonna let you off with honor. Open up the doors, and we're gonna. Uh, Open up the doors and we're going to let you off. We're going to beam you off. And we're going to go to another galaxy. Oh, thank, thank you for you. coming through. Thank you so much, David. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye. Peace. There you have it. There you have it. Craft room. There you have it. Man. We talked it. We spoke it. And it actually happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, that was very that was great. enlightening. My mind is like... Boom, man. So much to unpack, unplug with. I mean, thinking outside the bubble, a lot of people, man, brought a lot of, a lot of um, truth. Make sure you do your research about everything we talk about on, it, on here and, and um, look it up yourself, man. Yeah, he was, going, he was going in. Yeah, he went in. He went in. Somebody said, boom, guess who stepped up in the room? So, and, and you got to remember, 
Thank you, uh, Janie. Janie says, so cool, pay KP. So I ain't liking my shirt, too. Uh, you got to remember, um, today is is so much different, and I'm, I'm going to say this. Remember, it's uh, retrograde, right? Mm -hmm. When did we do a show on a Tuesday? Yeah. It's different. It's just different. Podcraft going up on a Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. It's just diff different. It's a different feel. It's a different mind state. And in the morning at that, I'm supposed to be asleep right now, but it's all good. Nah, I went to bed early, woke up early. It's probably the way I'm supposed to do it anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yo, that was great. Yeah, man, that was incredible, man. Can't wait for a part two. Oh, you saw that? We're gonna be, we're gonna be out in London, drinking tea, and we're yeah. gonna do it. We're gonna do it with the ma. I don't know. I should have asked him what's his favorite tea, matcha or um, you know, yeah. oolong. We didn't have time for too much small talk, but he was just just knocking it out nonstop. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for your super chats, everybody who came through. Thank everyone who came through. Yeah, this has been um. This has been great, been mind blowing. Everything's been just how I imagined, and I think it kind of exceeded even that. Yeah, AD. I only shouted out the uh, super chats that were actually asking questions, but uh, shout out to everybody else. Shout out to uh, Danny Salinas, Kermit, uh, Aquarius Helix. Uh, let's see who else did I miss? Uh, Shannon Southern. Sorry, I didn't get to ask him about the five uh, G. Uh, it's all right. See. He's coming back for part yeah. two. He's coming back. We did the shout out to one. my man Katia. He was gonna, he was gonna come through, and a, a whole bunch of everybody who support man. Now was born, and everybody who's down with the click. Yep. About with the rocket ship that's uh, shooting off. Um, um, Vinny, you know what I'm saying. I want everybody to know that we we need to um, also we have to also build up our energy and keep our everything love, keep it respectful, stay in a in a respective state that way we can continue to grow and um as a collective stop the fighting and start the growing you know what i'm saying because they got everybody manipulated and everything going against each other anyway we got a super chat again. yep shout out to uh where does bond son uh shout out to uh cleo i didn't get a chance to ask him about the jacob one yeah, uh where does bond oneness reign supreme and gratitude always wins yeah um, Botanical Brother says Thank you for hosting such a great guest Blessings to you Mr. Ike and Mr. Priest Yeah uh, Seal Fink says As human beings are we supposed Okay I did that one already True Sika what up True Sika how you doing bro He says Priest mm -hmm. And David Ike yes sir <laughs> I know right mm -hmm. Gotta come out with a, a single You know what I mean make sure So we got There we got yeah, some um, people up in the building today. We got um, a request for Saffron, so yeah, we can play that later. Yeah, we're going to get into the music. Make sure y'all go out and get Mother. It's out right now. Um, a lot of people, man, y'all give me so much love. It inspired me, and I'm going to keep on going, going to keep on moving. And a matter of fact, we're going to be, we're going to, me and AD going to put some ideas together after this. So we're going to keep it moving while y'all in the building. And uh, let's pick it up, AD. Let's get it, let's get to the music, yeah. Stuff like that. Hold on, we're almost Dance. there. Huh? Almost, almost there. there. Uh, Danny Salinas, uh, can I play a song? Yes, just send it. Uh, Green Ave says, would love to hear you guys discuss psychedelics, mainly DMT. One of the yes, that would be awesome. Um, that'd be something to go into because the DMT experience, I think, exposes exactly what he was talking to as far as us being in a simulation. Um, especially because anecdotally people speak upon the grid that they see. They see a grid, almost like a matrix-like grid, a lot of uh, symmetry, a lot of, um, you know, kaleidoscope-type things where everything looks so numeric as if though you're in, inside an actual, like, computer. Mm -hmm. But that's supposed to, you know, that's DMT. Um, so we're going to play Saffron, and Jeffrey says, just showing some love. Yeah. All right, now we can go into the music. But yeah, we just, we just it, it can be a challenge to shoot all these super chats. I knew it was going to be a lot of super chats today, but mm. man, we did the best we could. So that was cool. So shout out to everybody for that. Exactly. Now we're going to go into the music. So uh, uh, there's not a show tomorrow. <coughs> Ole me cattle. No show tomorrow. This is the second show of the week. Yeah. Um, for those who are new watching us for the first time out there, 
uh, welcome to the Killer Priest Podcast. Be sure to hit the like and hit the subscribe because we have a lot of interesting guests that come on this show. And if you look back to our old episodes, you'll see uh, other guests that we've had, such as Jordan Maxwell. We've had Santos Bonacci, Bro Sanchez, just to name a few. Um, yeah. Where are we at? Did we get to 60K yet? I haven't checked, but we will mm. find out. All right, moderators. Get up on it. Keep, yeah, man, we hit that like and that subscribe. Let's go. Uh, man, I'm feeling great today. 700 watching, 740. Hey, wow. It was, it was moving up. A lot, moving of, up, lot moving of new viewers out there, so. Yeah, man, come on in. And we're like, we're, we're here every Monday and every Wednesday, no, normally, at 5 Pacific. We'd be up here. We'd be dropping that. And I like what he said about solutions. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's about moving the problem. If you take away the problem, you won't have to do a solution. So take it a step further. You know yeah. what I mean? So that that way, that means go beyond your limit. When mm -hmm. you get to your limit, reach a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you did your 10 push-ups. Do that. When you do your 10, you completed your cipher. Mm -hmm. That's it. That Your set is done. But what happens when you push one more? Extra? Push one more. Go the extra. Push it to the limit. Yeah. That 11. Then you go into that 11. Yeah, push it to the limit. Mm -hmm. So you're at your limit. But you got to go beyond your limit. Go beyond. And then you'll see the realms of, oh, man, my mind have overcame my body and my and my capacity level that I set for myself. Mm -hmm. I went into the etheric realm of just, I'm in the 11 zone now. Yeah. You have surpassed 10 and you added another one to that cipher. Yeah. So now you knowledge, knowledge. Now you all the way up in there. You never stop learning. Yeah. The, it, learning is endless. Yeah. You know, some say that we're not actually learning. We're just learning remembering. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's endless. I like what he was saying about how, um, you know, because we're all living our own experience yeah. in this world, that there's no no need to push anything on anybody else necessarily. So That's right. That's why it's easy to respect everyone else's religion, whatever someone else believes in, because they're all going through their own experience separately. Well, you do you. Yeah. Yeah, you do you. You know what I'm saying? How you draw up your truth, you draw it up to where you see that, you know? And uh, but the problem is when you're trying to push your belief systems on everybody else, and there's a problem with that. Mm -hmm. That's going into I forgot the name of it, but it, that's going into well, you're you're definitely damned mm -hmm. if you don't believe what I believe. Yeah, and that's you know, and that's like holding on to something, and you're just in your own little hologram, looking yeah. out for that. You have to let go of those things. Let go. Mm -hmm. That's when they say somebody is projecting. Yeah, you stop like, oh, you're just projecting though. because well, you we're all projectors, we're all light, you know. Yeah. So if someone's just projecting their views, they're just projecting. So yeah, take I'm it for what it is. I'm gonna beat you into believing. What, believe. <laughs> what happens if you don't? The person doesn't. Yeah. Then you go into that turmoil and your own self, and you know whatever it is, you become narcissistic minded and blinded and broken. Where you have to refix that self. The thing yeah. is fixing self, going into fixing self mm -hmm. to build up self to heal. Once you heal yourself, then you can get out of that, you know, that trap you set up for yourself or the yeah. trap they set up for you. Get out that trap. Thanks, David Ike. We out that trap now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got to so create a bubble, like, like a shield uh, against everyone's negativity. Yeah. You know, that can be the challenging part. And sometimes the, the best way to set up a shield is to forgive. Yeah. You know, now we're getting biblical because the Bible talks about that, to forgive others. Mm. You know, we're not forgiving them for them. We're forgiving them for us. You know what I mean? So that they're not in our heads. You know, we forgive that person and at the same time forget situations so that we can just exist and, in our own world. In the collective body, because mm -hmm. it's not actual body, but like he said, uh, we are a body. Yeah. Once you, you know, a righteous body, a body re rehearsing a righteous act. So when we start, we, we got a collective, well, everybody got the same type of, maybe different mi missions, but we have the same type of viewpoints. Mm -hmm. We know that there's, there's more to it. Yeah. So we become a body, mm -hmm. like Voltron. Yeah. Well, people who do psychedelics have a common theme to where they say that we're, we are all connected. Yeah. You know, even Bob Marley spoke about us being all one. Yeah. One mm -hmm. love. Let's get together and we'll be and feel all right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he said one. And what is love? L-O-V-E. I asked for more understanding. Living one vibrational energy. Ah, that was good. Living one's vibrational energy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Put that, and put that in your pipe. And smoke and your, it. Yeah, Keep your vibration your, high. 
Put that in your mer Merca boo. <laughs> Circle or macabre. You put that in your macabre wheel. It. Yeah, we need to get a macabre pipe. Activate, activate that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mem remember, Merkaba and macabre. Oh, that's right. It's like tomato and tomato. Mm. Merkaba. That's the, that's the original Hebrew word you said. The macabre is just the regular say So hmm. there's Merkaba too. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get this work today. Somebody said that. Super gay. All right, so we ready for the music? Let's do it. All okay. Right. Shout out so, to Voltage. That's in the building. Shout out Voltage. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, we have a segment in our show that we call Song Promotions, where we, pla where we play tracks that were submitted to the show by, you know, uh, producers, DJs, artists of all sorts. So um, we have today's submissions for the show already lined up, and we're going to get to it right now. The first submission that we have is from an artist named the DJ from Guam. Ah, oh, shout out to the Guam. Featuring Killer Priest. The Guam show. From Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I think he's played this before. Um, and it's called Love Shots. Pow, pow. Yeah. And that day we saw Killer Well. Let me break Fog it down to where the monks be. Right out there. Mm hmm In the trees with the monkeys. The Egyptians hold the art keys. That's you in the booth. Snake venom, great emblem, above a lake with naked women. Go through your heart with the beast by your door. The chief speaks of the moors. Eyes watch, one flinch, reach for your swords. Who's keeping score? You die, you weep and more. Teeth on the floor. This is savage madness. Practice, the world is backwards. Duck, duck, these are love shots. shots. Duck, these are love shots. Right. Book of Revelation, I take the head of Satan like Jason. Hold it in front of the nations. Wings open up like a raven. Unseen like the masons. In the ring like the pagans. From the hills we be racing. During nighttime, I write rhymes to fight crime. Superhero, the hookah widow. People in the loops in their earlobes. Star seas, star series, gods in the pyramids. War, here come the charge the villages. Star seas, godly, safari. Alien armies, dark trees. Love conquers all. Love shots, love shots. Love conquers all, love shots. Duck, duck, duck. These are love shots, love shots. No blood drop, love shots. Dark horse, guard force. Supreme Mike sauce, you are right off. The monk with the stick. On the trunk near the pit, never once sick, drunk till he piss. Fight a plane, my writing is strained, alien blood inside my veins. Migraines, killer priests fill my fleet, coming, sky thundering. Hear the trunk and the thump of the sword in your stomach, which hunt. Old nigga 95, Omega Amon Rod, Favor Amon Ra. Sage. Gondra for a jaw. Love that neighbor Ooh, even you. though he's a hater. Love find favor. Swing the lifesaver, take the life. Neighbor. Love shots. Love shots. Pop, pop. Blood drop. Love shots. Love shots. Love shots. Love shots. Pop, pop. There's no blood drop. Love shots. Guam. All right, so check that out. Make Shout sure out to the Guam. Make sure y'all follow the DJ from Guam on YouTube. Had a great time out there, man. Yeah. You got to come out there, AD. Where's it at again? You gonna, uh, it's out in Marina. Marina. Marina yeah. Del Rey? No, Marina, California. Where's that? Is it more than a half hour away? Yeah. I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, he never goes nowhere, man. We got to get AD out. You only did that one Rock the Bells with me. Yeah. <laughs> perform. That was dope. That was, dope. I was I was DJing for you in the back. Yeah. Yo, at that show, they handed me a mic, asked me if I wanted to be like your, your hype man. Uh -huh. But I didn't know any of your tracks. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. For the, the love. I said no to that. Over. For the sake of the performance, I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want to be the goofball up there, doesn't know his tracks. 
You know what I mean? I didn't want to ruin your show. No, you did. I was like, no, I'll just DJ. Yeah. We did, um, yeah, they got me up early. I'm up here. Early bird gets the worm. Man. Early bird gets the worm. I always remember that. If you're up, let your wings spread. May you have one of the prop- prosperous days ever. I mean, I'm I'm just full of catechins and theanine. Look up catechins. Look up theanine. Look up these dopamine, natural dopamine. Yeah. Just boom, boom, boom. And all type of thoughts, you know, for, for exposure. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was going in talking about submissiveness and how people are just like... So that, yeah, it kind of like brings it home to where we at, man. We had a lot of great speakers up here, you know, um, talk about the mind. For If y'all knew, go check out some of the old episodes and you will see that we had a lot of great minds up here that were, that were building. Uh, let's go to the next. Where we at? All right. <clears throat> next up, we got, let me see. Hold on. We've got DJ Vulture from Detroit. Myself looking real peachy. <laughs> peach tree, peach fuzz. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Jet Life. I see you. <laughs> DJ Vulture has a track here. Oh, DJ Voltage? No, Vulture. Oh, DJ Vulture. Hey. Shadow Unit, the let's smoke go. got me. All right, let's go. Here we go. Dig the vibe. It's systematic, we controlling these happenings, happily destroying everything. We get the grubby hands on actually manufacturing disease. Programming your reaction using frequency, transmitting your beliefs to you through the TV. You want your Samsung Galaxy. Dig the vibe kind of reminds me of Corporate Avenger, maybe like an insane clown posse type of vibe. I get it. 
Um, but I kind—I want to—I—I see you have the words on screen, but I feel like you're putting a little bit too much processing on the vocals. Do you know what I mean? Because it—I'm trying to really hear what you're saying. I—I I know you're going for that processing effect, but I think if you go a little bit cleaner, I would go something more like what Beastie Boys do for Sure Shot. You know what I'm saying? You see how like they put a little bit of distortion on their vocals. But you could understand what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? Too much. We won't get. No, I know. So it's like uh, it's just a little bit of distortion on the vocal, so that you can. It sounds like they're like in some kind of auditorium, somewhat, and it's just crank, like an overdrive. You know what I mean? That's as much effect as I would put on the vocals if I were you, so that you can hear what you're saying. That's it. Everything else is cool. Yeah. All right, so that's that for that. Let's keep it moving. Next up, when they got uh, Lord Galaxar. We got to try It's called Full Steppin' from the Gamma Quadrant. Lord Galaxar. Here we go. Born on a ball of dirt, some inhabitants call it Earth. I realized my purpose knocked the holes out the church. Rolled the wave down the body surf. Swear to God, she's a flirt. Twelve and slid up the side of her mini skirt. Stuck to me like an enemy can't get rid of her. Name's her name, but just for fun, I call her Jennifer. Make the earth spin for her. Fuck it, I make her the owner of the cream of the motherfucking universe. Spaceship form the sevens in the heaven, that's my ride. Galaxy are strong to the finish like Popeye. Just did a song with Gifted, that's my guy. Three percent on the phone, bitch, that's bye bye. My knowledge universal like Galaxy High. Did the knowledge at 12, did the wisdom at 25. 45, no job, the vibes like die, cipher divine. Teaching 85, God, I'm trying. Sperm cells on the decline, shoot my kids all in a behind. Just that slick Rick. 89, Rick James, 85, Rich Pride live on Sunset, knocking hoes down, but where my funds at? Back to pimp slaps, park hoes like Cadillacs, I paint the whip, the code look like Battle Cat, baby, can you handle that? I rap a taste, smack the hoe out of her mind, get on her case, then I'm flying, in the wind, stupid watch like Ben that 10, one, that dog that the bitch like Ren 10, here we 10. go, here we go, like DJ running, out here knocking pimps, hoes, bro, Galax all running, let my weed dry in the oven, door open, temp 110, 30 minutes later, I was buzzing, sweating the fat mama like we playing the dozens big bitch pussy good at stovetop stuff shout out my mama and all my cousins i don't fuck with none of them but i still love them yeah my clown got quartz and amethyst in the headband play with lord galaxy so i use a dead man stomping out of muddy waters like red man fights a jab twice one in my head one in my hand mark of the beast the less melanin talk of the peace to the east little ho keep walking east when i pull up i want to see the hill smoke you know what i'm saying None of that. I know I'm God's sight for divine. I don't worry about my mission, bitch. You worry about chores. Keep these hoes on all fours doing chores for the Lord. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, just some of that shabada, 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 knee, knocky, nah, nah, nicky, nah, nah, nicky, nee. Yeah, bitch, don't let me put this golf suit on. Go upside your head with one of these motherfucking nine irons, bitch. Cancel Galaxy or hell. Bitch, you be better off trying to cancel Dave Chappelle. I don't give a shit who you tell, bitch. My essence is in the air, bitch. I'm everywhere. Go! Hey. Fire. Shout out to Lord Galaxar. Sure, oh, shit. Yes. Yeah. Contra just fucked up. Boy. Yeah, keep the whores on all fours. It's for serve, serve the Lord. Yes, man. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, man. Y'all follow the infamous Galaxar for more. Ah, that round two. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Lord Galaxy are always doing his thing. Indeed. That was fine. Let's keep it moving. Yep. Coming up next now, we got DJ Aurora Borealis. Aurora. Track is called Academia Rap, produced by Aurora Borealis. Listen. Yo, Chucky, yo, Chucky, yo, Chucky, yo, Chucky, yo, Chucky. Yo, 
stop from her, I don't know where to run, know where to hide, but the fall the edge of the earth without space you on, turn you to a fire boy, if you're omnipotent, I'm the president, the earth create that crack when I got killed, cumulative kill shit, change my enemies, run it bare, told me, I'm gonna stop my own religion, I'm gonna take it away, better than rock sex. Yo, check it, 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 yo, and you must throw your head bullet, pointed at your cranium, misspread the statue, bread your YD with the address, keys out your pockets, SWAT T couldn't spot me with a rocket, satellite, I'm out of sight, come a bright like thief in the night, loose leaf, I move like Bruce Lee, a ninja, Zed Lee, I collect skulls of rap back. Battles by the power of great skull. It's he, man, master of the universe. Comets, asteroids, meteorites, everything dispersed. All matter, all elements. I'm not getting the final battle for once. It's trampled. Hey. I always said at the same time. Okay. I like how he's keeping it short and sweet. <clears throat> Again, with the uh, vocals. Yeah, we'll just bring the uh, effects down on the vocals. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to be heard with that clarity. Cause I mean, you're saying you're saying some more and more good stuff. Slipping in the darkness. Our brother Borealis, you keep uh, you keep improving. Yep, I like it, brother. Just yeah. keep going. Okay, who am I missing here? Uh, this one was yesterday. Yesterday seems so far away. Mm hmm. Oh. I think we did that one yesterday. Okay. Uh, next up. Yeah, I believe that's me. We got the Mighty Hebrew. I was supposed to play it yesterday. Oh, shout out to the Mighty Hebrew, man. But uh, I told him we're going to get to him today. So. That up and running right. Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a ninth song from his Dark Side of the Moon album by Mighty Hebrew, produced by Chief Contao. Here we go. Damn it, I forgot to bring my puppet. Dogs, spark marks, talk, bark, play hard, get part. Universe thoughts, born hard, that's brain. Like a rage, star seed, just blaze. In caves, we rage, rage from pain. Wasted, ginger hate, stay in our DNA. Track home, baby, yeah, sun fate 10. Fan band, night green lamp band. Schizophrenic, panic on Xanax. Beyond planets, ram it, bomb like cannons. Fuck cameras, this ain't damn dead. Nigga man, no nigga better than him. We win, crushing, G double bitch, mix shit, piss, period, kick it. Period, love potion, nemesis, blend in, he get in it, like fake rims, world in, we begin, yes, yes, yes. make room, dark side of the moon, make room, dark side of the moon, make room, number fire in here, dark side of the moon, journey for you is truth, we spark and choose, make room, dark side of the moon, make room, dark side of the moon, make room, Dark side of the moon, journey for you is truth. We spark and choose. Flesh wounds and tombs from the room. Doom, consume, boom. As they bloom, last they're begging fools. They're busy tools. Boom, boom. Nine ether, smoke stream. With a rhyme needle, light sheen, divine being. Elohim, who I be. Landine, Ben Ami, Mizraim. Be me, vision 4D, McGee and me. Green, make me angry. Philosophy, Cavadine. Batteries, meet me. Concrete, feel <laughs> heat. B Street, King, any beat. White meat, factories, any beast. In the east, arms reach, master lead. Get chopped like blocks, hot like fire. Twist like chopper, fuck a copper. Hot lava, I'm lava. So survivor. Far, far. Yeah. That was dope, yo. M make room. Dark side of the moon, make room. Dark side of the moon, make room. Mighty Hebrew with that sick song right there. Ninth song from his album. Check it out. Y'all can peak journey to the dark side of the moon. Out everywhere now. Yeah. 
Shout out to Talk. Shout out to my, Mighty Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Fire. Absolute fire. All right. Let's go. Next now, we got none other than Voltage Controller. Oh, man. Yo, Voltage spit a verse, yo. What? He's spitting verses? Shh. He's not just a beat maker? Nah, man. We got a ver- We got a song together, yo. Bro. Uh, yo. He spit a verse on it. I was like, oh, shoot. I was shocked. And it was dope. All right. Shout out to Voltage, man. Well, this track is called Cosmic Wind Wheels. Mm. I love that. I just love the name of it. Forty nine point seven. Fifty nine point seven. Almost there, sixty. Come on, y'all, let's get this. The wind chimes. Voltage control. <laughs> Cool. That yeah, send that beat to me. I know. I want to. That's gonna be the name of it. It's, it's an experience. Yeah. Like no, not like no other. Fire. Fire as always. Yep. All right. Let me see. Uh-huh. I think we are down to our grand finale. Oh shit. Yep. You already know who it is. Hey, the car. You already know. Hey. Hit me with his new number two. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. This track is called Anunnaki Safari. Hey. It's about to be fire right here. Yep. Full screen. Let's go. The experience begins. The Anunnaki and the Agigi, who are the bodies of deified spirits, were identified with the stars of the northern and southern heaven. The Babylonians believed that the will of the gods was made known to men by the motions of the planets. Safari, Ferrari, Kamikaze, Bugatti. Suicide doors up, you decide who am I. Lens of perception, my sword is up. So where you been roaming with no direction, you by the line. You 
you at your mind clearly, I'm out the question. Mark of the beast, leaving carbon footprints. When I march on the beat, place the stars out your reach like a drunk wow. wise man through the bars. That's how I teach. Explosive high voltage, check the sparks I release. These words are so deep, it's hard to repeat. Like a seedless fruit, sweeter than juice, but could reproduce. My bishop make you hiccup. Brr, it's a stick up. Go on, put your wrist up. Watch the time stop and wind before you crash the planet. Mother shit, why sipping godly wine? Zodiac, the holy rapture got the stage lit up. Mother's talking at the ass, like the bottom on your pin up. Olympic torch, candelabra, knowledge is advanced. Masonic, you can tell this confidence already by a standing posture when you playing season hate. You should never plan to prosper whirlpool World Jews spinning in my hands to stop a topographic College rap knowledge of the race and not a I'm too genuine to lie to be Frank Sinatra Alma Rocky Matrix Saga Asian Nagasaki sipping venom from a rattlesnake in danger for the space of a dollar I love how he stands out This is the This is the Gotcha Bush Chancellor, God's a good gambler. Play the dice, time will eat the phony. I demand a slice, scan the price of streets. We making sandwiches from amateurs, this can't be right. I remember studying by candlelight to memorize potential lies. They specialize in saying we ain't special. Eyes open, sky, ocean, mind explosion. Liverpool wide smokes with indigenous tribal lomas, invisible cycles flowing. Breathe, inhalation, acceleration. Excellent occasion to excel in this amazing living, Mason's lip creation. Huh? What did you learn to be the man? Of your currency today is not 11th, that's emergency. Nine's emerge, 11 T's completion, seeking freedom, leader, lead. Watch me shock the world purposely. Apocalypse, go learn to me. Fantasia, planet, Asia, man, for Mason, Sue, and Nasa, Lama, lasers at the clergy. Megatronic scholar, play your great Akana, our behavior, job, a race, and save with you. Sharp enough to save you. Future populator, you can't dispute these angel flutes. Harmonize around me, it's hard to try to count me. Bat magician, mag edition, mass collision, crack the ribbon, sitting in the sky dome. I took the mega right from off the Apple on the iPhone. Smite the wicked writer, cosmic ticket to remind Rome. Karma, Suchi, Tanji, Judah, yeah, Lippus, making my moan. Back up in the eye within my cyclone, Regina throne. Palace, tower, palace, flower, more to do, I pulled on you. Herbal lessons, learn your lessons, word confesses. Urban reverend, cosmophysics, servant senses, acquiesce. Back to flesh, go for your kill with just a glare without a murder weapon. Constellation, sperm collection, constipated word expression. Here's another key to free you. Spaces in a nervous head, trouble, seven world connection. This is our day to be wondered at. The Did science of off? astronomy had gone hand in hand with the superstition huh? of astrology in Mesopotamia from mm. time. Kai Zodiac, once again, consistency. Consistency of staying elevated lyrically, conceptually, mm. and like I said before, oyster Oyster when it comes to rap. It's always my ass. Shout out to Kai Zodiac. Great stuff. I got your math too, and I'm going to hit you up. Yeah. If you guys want to submit your songs or tracks for the next episode, which is going to be on Monday, go to killerpriest.tv slash song promo. The link is in the description. Mm. Yeah. This concludes the song promotion segment. Hey. Yo, we just came in. (laughs) <laughs> so we won't get fined. <laughs> no doubt. Yo, thank y'all for coming in on a ill Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday in the morning. You know, and you know what's crazy mm-hmm. is that we have a whole day ahead of us. Yeah. And we just, we just, so much knowledge and so much elevation and mm-hmm. um, so much positivity. And we here earlier, we're going to, someone said off day tomorrow. Yep. Yep, Vinny. Make sure you send that beat to me too. Yeah. Um, we're gonna leave it like this. Yo, we thank everybody. Let's get to 60k, 484 in the building. 
Thank you for coming to Killer Priest Podcast. For everybody who knew, we call it the Podcraft because we take off. We blast. We about to blast off into the galaxies beyond that. And <clears throat> right here is the Podcraft where we say everything that's on your mind, get it out, research, put it down. We're not biased. We don't just, we just let everybody get it off. And uh, right here, we want to leave y'all with this. You now, wait a minute. That? Before we go, hold up. Didn't you say you wanted to play something? Oh, you want to give him something? I mean, you you said. Oh, what's a, what's a, what's a, um, yeah, I wanted to. It, yeah, was, a, I felt it was a workout today. song. Yeah, you got the workout joint? Yeah, but. Uh, a couple of joints. I should have hit him with a marker, Buddha. Let's see. Which one we got? What album did you want to put it on? Or did you not want to say? What is the workout? That's the Merkaba Circus. Vedic Vape Room. Shout out to Danny Salinas. It's Brother Glow. Oh, that's right. Let me go back to it right now. That's right. Is it in there? So you got... Uh, no, 80s Game Show. That's not it. Not in Brother <laughs> Glow. Uh, I don't want to start naming off tracks. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm going to give it away. Merkabas... Let's see. It's on your Vita vape room. Uh, let's work out. Maybe it's in here. But that's going to take too long, though. Prana? So, no. Prana? You said it was. Oh, Prana is Mark of the Buddha, right? Yeah, we'll play some of Prana. Oh, uh, is, is it Mark of the Buddha? Oh, so Esoteric? No, I play Prana. Okay. No. We can't find it. Yeah. That's why we're going to stick around and get it together a little bit. You don't know the name of the song? Yeah, it says work out. Uh, you know, we name this we name the song sometimes either workout or gym or gems. Hmm. I know. It's a beat by what's the name? Working out. Oh, we take it so long. I know, right? It's so long. Like one of the an angelical. Let me see. Angelical. Go back to Brother Glow. Uh, I wanted to. Let me check here. T. Fady Good. No. Let's see. M O B. No. Did I check this already? Yep. No. You have so much music. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Like one. That's B. Fox Chase. Uh, no. Craft Letter. Yeah, it was. Definitely a fire show. Yeah, it was a good show. We're going to just have to set it up for next time, I guess, and just play something else. Mr. Universe. Um, yeah, because I forgot the name of it. Any, uh, I'll get the name of it. Um, Teacher's Pet. From Me to Me. Wait, which, which album is this? Uh, Brother Glow. Pet? Yeah, I, th I feel like it was Return to Nebula that you were going to have something in there. No. It was going to go into an album, and then you're like, nah. Let me, Vedic let me... Vapor? Yeah, and then you're like... Is it Vedic? Hold on, let me see. You were like, let me change it for another album. So I was like, all right. So fat. Oh, we might as well. Trainer. Yeah, the trainer. That's what it was. But well, we gotta change the name. The okay. Trainer, Jim. I yeah, don't know yeah. So At least we found it though. Want me to play it? Yes, play some of it. You wanna set it up? Exclusive. Since uh he was here, we got some people in the building. Who that? Somebody said play Prana. You wanna play Prana or you wanna play Trainer? Yeah, Prana, because Prana is what's the name? Trainer is um that's uh cover boy. Right? Okay. So it's between Cover Boy and uh, let's, cause we didn't play a Marco Buddha. So Prana, Prana is like one of my favorite joints. And Trainer, too. Trainer is my joint. What y'all want to hear? Prana or Trainer? Just for the name, because we don't know. <laughs> what they saying? It's, you have, it's a delay of like seven seconds. Huh? It's a seven second delay. So whatever you ask will pop up on screen in seven seconds. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, seven seconds. If you struggle mad, it's time to wake up. 
just off the floor. We got one vote for Prana. Triple JC says both. <laughs> Shout out to, to Shanley. Prana, 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 Prana. They're like, Prana just sounds got, cool. Uh, no, no, Prana. Ugh, yeah. Shout out to Marvin Poole. Let's play Prana. Like dope track. All right. Play Prana. Here we go. From the magic. What do, I, Is it, do you want to say what album it's coming out on? Nah. Okay. Because we don't ever know where it's coming out. Keep them in suspense. Here we go. Here's Prana. What, what album does it say? It's the Marco Booty. Magic. Yeah. And new Nikki mummies, aliens, Sumerians, consuming free countries. Esau was the hairy man. Yakub had the big head. Many were misled. Gospel of the Shashus, apostles with thick feds. Twist dreads, kiss the dead, and those that are sick in bed. Then run out the door, ready for war. Load my clips with lead. A sci-fi sky setting, Armageddon, silent planet, head bandage, armor shredded. Comets headed, behold a dragon, seven headed, the holes in my hands in my resurrection. Media rights, headed for the social media types. Get on your mobile, you tweet or you type. This is global, show news, freedom you fight. Soon as the Pope rules, a cults too, kingdoms unite. Cointel Pro, exposed, UFO, the whole Israel knows. The book of Job took his toll. They came to Africa to look for gold. The draconian Draculas picked diamonds from coal before the master of massacres found. Us hiding in homes, they saw statues of our elders residing on thrones. We had plumbers, welders, writers of poems. Amongst the wonders, the Delta I Empire was known. Fabrics from Gucci, draped over my dome like a kufi. Middle Eastern jewelry around my neck, down to my buckle that says Louis. And I don't care, I wear it while France is burning. In Rome, I'm at a throne with a princess Persian, laughing, splashing in their oceans. Madmen speeding through their desert, crashing American suburbans. Even the English version preached the stop. demon words. Hey, hold up, wait up, wait up, wait up, wait up, wait up. Exclusive. Hot new man. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Show you that we weren't we working, man. We're not playing no game. We're man. not playing no game. Or oh, hot power. That that's produced by uh that's produced by the none other than M O B Marco Buddha. Yeah. Oh, ceaseless, like, oh man, we got work. We got work to do. We got work up in there. Uh shout out to Aries up in the building. Daddy. That it for the day. That it. 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 What are we doing, y'all? <laughs> That's what I say. Are we free flowing right now? Cause it's Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, I get exclusive. It's still four in the building. Or... Yeah, four seventy one. Huh? Four hundred and seventy one. Give him a little bit of training there. Ooh, so you are giving them both. Uh huh. Hey, we got time. Yeah. Should I give them some training too? Or should I just leave him like that? Might as well now. Mark and Buddha. This is uh, Cover Boy. So we got Mark and Cover. Here we go. Laugh. <laughs> yeah. Sasha, let it go. Fuck Thanks for that shout out. out. Yeah, I had to let that little that line finish right there. Yeah, we gotta let it go. That was fire. We're making music over here. Making music. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Perfect my cat too. Mojito joining the the little session right now. Hey, shout out to Mojito. He came through and he was cool. He was, I thought he was about to flip out at one moment. I mean, moment he, he, he did pop right up on on the main stage here for a yeah. second, but you know that's perfect time to smack. <laughs> well, he likes to attack Rasul. Yeah. <laughs> like yo, come here, show. Yeah. With Sue telling his story, cap me up on it. Shout out to Dave yeah. Flores, Voltage. Oh man, we got some stuff. We got some stuff. True, yeah, true. All day long, all day long. All right, y'all. So, thank y'all for coming through, and yeah. we out. See y'all on Monday. Peace. You must gain balance within yourself. Tell you what, the smart stuff is. Smart stuff. Tell me everything you know. Silk, hallucinogenic power. When Shiva was born, the sea turned to milk. Yes. And it snowed turmeric powder. One of her hands reached down and planted the bodhi. Yes. Then handed out roti with chickpeas amongst the thick leaves. Sat the yogi wearing big beads. 
Then here comes Jenna, the enlightener. Are you ready? She smell the spice as she entered. She painted the tiger and striped with henna. The oldest scrolls called the Rigor Vita. That's right. Her hair was not ether. Bigger features. Yes. Near the golden monkey, the stone toad. And the salamander before Alexandria was conquered by Alexander. Where the gods with the bronze head met the beast with the blonde dread. Yes. Dalai Lama meets Brahma. They feast on non bread. The Buddha was happy <laughs> and chubby. Rub the belly filled lucky. Good one. The gods got mean and turned green like mint chubby. Moving on. Ramus and Remus, the she wolf, gave birth to her puppy. Yes. A kid sat doing yoga. Play with his pet cobra. He said, Father, I have no attachment. I am one with everything. The sky blackened. Everything is connected. Then came Vishnu from out of flying crystal. I Star Trek through Tibet. Landed down near plants and insects. Approached the orange robed monk that sat in front of the monastery. The temple of forgotten vows. Brilliant. Of silence. Sweat dripped from my brow. I bowed. Priest, return to Easter Island. Witness me coming down from a cloud, holding the mic, hold back the crowd. Mel Chesedek inheritance, genetic transmission, mysteries of El Leon. Feel the wizardry as you impel to a stone. That's where the Ganesh killing Dumbo in the Laura Temple, a giant cave in the jungle beneath the stars. Many of the ancient gods depict bulls, snakes, birds, and cards. Original manuscript held its archives locked in the vault. Through the cobwebs and smoke, the living dead spell said and ghosts. The deepest rhymes I ever wrote beneath the shrine of the goats. Wet, naked, and soaked from a baby male to Gabriel riding Haley's tail. Comments hitting your conscience like 80 wells. The teachers in their pride, vain boasts. They know nothing, this mic holds substance, and it is they who obey and truly succeeded in achieving total ignorance and sheer bliss. I'm here for years, until I'm gone, I leave Saffron. Saffron, I leave Saffron. So, so, as you were, as the priest is going Born inside of a stone age, so up and out of the cracks, right? Came up to my be wrapped. Perhaps I take you to the temple soon. You all meet your doom. The spell of perfume. Accept the reality.